change this. Do that, and then should show up on YouTube. Yep. So let me do. That okay, okay, okay. Taking a break. Joins the red host. Cursed Sotek spawn. Another wretched foul is a thing. Joins the red host. Cursed Sotek spawn. Hi. Hello. How are y'all? Hello. One second. I'm getting. Let me get the. Let me get the Twitch announcements out. Uh, or the Twitch, the Twitter announcements. Make sure everyone can see that we're live everywhere. Uh, okay. Then the only thing I need is... Sorry, I should have had all this shit pulled up. Oh my god, the light is so bright. Um, should be illegal for white backgrounds in this age. Okay, got you over there. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much for the 21 months. Knuckle, thank you for the 26 months. Hope you're doing well. Hi. Well, hello to you as well. Uh, yeah, this is kind of just an impromptu stream. I just felt like playing some Total War and hanging out for a little bit because uh, I have not been on stream outside of lore beards in what feels like eternity um, so I just catching us a tech stream live finally uh, <laughs> um, KKP, hey what's up uh, how you doing thank you for the 27 months appreciate it hello is a tech 20 months already wow so yes, thank you very much for the 20 months. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, how? Mm, I need my chat. Cursed Sotek spawn. 21 months that Texas drinking age isn't. Uh, Texas 21 months? No, I don't think it's 21 months. I think, I think if you, uh, are attempting to give a 21, 21 month old child, uh, alcohol. There may be <laughs> there may be problems. Um, twenty one years old, yes. Uh, twenty one months, not so much. Joins the red host. Um, that's uh. <laughs> Started to go down a historical rabbit hole about ancient Roman serial killers, but I'm here instead, and it has already been twenty one months. Holy moly! Holy moly! Oh my god. You know we haven't played in too long when where we left off was on a prior save. Um and also uh wasn't even showing up without me enabling all saves. <laughs> That's sad. Um all right, here, let me get caught up on everything. Uh Octocraft, thank you so much for the 28 months that you're too. Appreciate it. How are you doing, dude? Good to see you. Uh, Shorter 9000, thank you for the 21 months. Uh, Jake Christie, I thank you for the 21 months. Um, started to go down uh, historical Roman, uh, Roman serial killers, but I'm here instead. <laughs> well, glad I could save you from that rabbit hole there. Um, uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, this is just gonna, I just kind of wanted to hang out with y'all for a little bit. Um, cause I, it's just been a hot minute and I, uh, I missed y'all, and uh, as much as I have been having a totally good time slaving away on Queek, um, I uh, wanted to take a break to just play some video games and hang out. Uh, Ooh, excuse me. So, yeah. Um, that being said, uh, 
I can't wait to buy my Goblin Axe Hewer. It's been my white whale mini for ages. Oh, Super Eagle, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, I'm glad you're uh I'm glad you're gonna finally be able to pick that up. That's awesome. It's it's a fun mini. It's 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 such a <laughs> it's such a stupid war machine, but it is very fun. Um it's it's just so goofy. It's so goofy, but kind of in like a really nice way. Um anywho, uh uh, yeah, so most of today I'm going to be focusing on y'all, just going to be focusing on chat and uh, what y'all are saying and hanging out with y'all. Um, we'll kind of be playing this in the background. Um, Mr. Warren, thank you so much for gifting us up to serve us in. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, so, let me get caught up on all the messages here. Uh, let's see. When do you think we'll see preview content for Thrones? I'm thinking either next week or the week after. Uh, well, Lich Lord, that's, mm, that's hard to say. Um, if you had asked me that a couple, a little ways back, like, Take if you had asked me that before SSG, Thursday, what is I would have said this upcoming week. They have released? Um, however, in light of the recent announcement by Sega of Europe, where they're letting their firing like even more people um it's hard to say i'm hoping the announcement will be this week but it could be next week um or even the week after um right now i don't know i don't know if thrones of decay is going to see any delays because of what sega of europe just did i'm pretty sure that ca is in a place where they're like they're pretty much done with it um, like Thrones of Decay is pretty much done. Um, so like it's time to start the announcements and get everything rubbed up. Um, I think, but like I said, like it was, it was super unexpected. Um, I was not at all expecting Sega to just come in and be like, Brah, fuck you. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, hoping for this week could very well be the week after, I think. Um, and thank you for the bits. Uh, let's see what's going over on YouTube. Does Skaven like Elven wine? Yeah, prop like I I imagine for them it's probably like a um, you know, a matter of taste. Uh, I'm sure there are some among them that like it, and many that do not. Oh my god, I need so much more money, dude. Um, so I, that being said, I imagine it's, it's probably a delicacy that is not liked by all that many Skaven. Um, I would imagine it's pretty few and far between in the grand scheme of things. Um, okay. So he can head back. I think I want to send him. Why was I going that way? I don't really want to go fight the ogres. I think I'd rather go into the old world. So I'd rather come this way, because I don't have anything over here. Um, I'm trying to remember what I was doing on here. Anywho, um, did I see Legend's new video about the layoffs? I mean, I don't need to see a video about the layoffs, because I am I hear about it firsthand. Um, it is super unfortunate news, and I'm really sad about it. Fight the battle and keep the cargo. Give the cargo back. Uh, no, finders keepers. Are those chosen? Uh, wretched, they thing. are. The red host. Uh, Ooh. Cursed Sotek spawn. This. Hey Sotek. Hope you a, are doing well. That's actually kind of a nasty ass corn army. <laughs> really looking forward to the quick release. Thank you, Lally Fifty Seven. I'm excited for Queek. Um, I. It is. It is. I cannot tell you how happy I am that I am actually making some really good progress. Um, I I have felt like I've been stuck in one particular part of trying to hash out what I wanted to do with kind of the story I was telling for like, I don't, I don't even know how long it's been. Um, but I was just, I was just stuck on it. Like I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to do with it, how I wanted to resolve that particular thing. And I finally figured it out. I finally figured it out and was like, yes, this, this is the right way to handle this. 
Uh, at least to a, at least to a point where I'm happy. So finally got that part written and it's done, which is I I can't even express how much of a load off that is. Um, but the uh, as far as like how it's progressing, I can happily report that about the first I want to say like the first forty minutes is getting very close to being like 100% like the video is done um and then you know we'll t we'll tackle the next chunk after that um part so part one is going to release first we're, we're as far as like how the release is going to work it's going to be exactly like the Belagar video right so there's going to be three parts part one is going to be the story of Queek part two is going to be the <gasps> Uh, what like I think part two is like skills and equipment and like one other thing and then part three is a famous battle segment and the end times lore and then after all three parts release separately we'll put out the movie version which just combines everything into one fucking massive mess um but uh so that is that is kind of what's coming down the chute um, I'm super excited about it. I hope everyone else is really excited about it. Um, it should be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be quite good, especially cause I'm, I'm hoping to, I'm, I'm very much hoping that I have successfully made a character video that is better than all of the other ones. Um, so hopefully it'll be better than Belagar, better than Cetra, better than Archeon, better than all those. Um, uh, sadly, it's that time again where I feel worried for a creator of some of my favorite games. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the, yeah, the, the, the Sega of Europe news really sucks. Um, what, you know, obviously we don't really know what the full extent of the damage is going to be. Um, probably won't until late next week at the earliest, but even then I doubt we'll know the truth for quite some time. Um... It, it's it's hard being a game developer these days apparently um the video game market is just it is struggling uh, my heart goes out to those poor bastards because it it just it just keeps happening Franz should get a remaster ah uh, Franz will get more than just a little remaster um yeah uh to say the least Yeah, hold the fire. Okay, we do want to focus taking out all the big shit first. Please, no, leave my dudes alone. Throw the armor of contempt on them. So if we can kill, now we need we need the mammoth on all the chosen. We're gonna be smart about this. Okay, I need all the blunderbusses to kill the... If we can get all the blunderbusses to get rid of the bloodthirster, I think we'll be fine. Once the bloodthirster's dead, I'm not that worried. Better than Setra, that means I have to redo it? Oh, no. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Wait, I take it back. Um, yeah, I... Once... I mean, once Queek is done, I would very much like to finish the Karagate Peak stuff, so I'd like to do Scarsnake after that. Uh, but Scarsnake is going to be a much, 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 much easier story to tell compare uh, comparatively. Um, like, Queek has been a fucking nightmare that I will be so happy to have be over with. Which is why I want to make sure I do a really good job, because, you know, I want this to be a one-and-done thing. Okay, I'll come back. If we could turn and shoot the Chaos Warriors, that would be cool. Um... Yeah, I, I, I look forward to remastering Carl Franz. Carl Franz and Lewin Langer are actually pretty high up in my brain right now as far as like 
characters that I would like to redo. Um, like, I'd, I'd like to give them another shot. Um, because I feel like I could do better than the original version I made by a long shot. I mean, granted, those videos are really, really old, so obviously I can make a better version. Um, but there's actually, like, a lot of lore that I've discovered about the characters since making those videos. Because back in the day, right, uh, back when I originally was making all of those legendary lord videos, I only was doing research about, like, their, um, I was only really doing research about, like, their mentions in the army books or, like, little campaign supplements that I had. Um, I was not, like, exploring every single source. I was only exploring most sources. Um, so I just totally didn't have, um, all of the stuff I needed. Because, you know, I didn't realize that if you're wanting to tell the entire story of, say, like, a, a, a good example is, like, for Lewin Langker, right? Is that if you want to tell the entire story of Lewin Langker, you actually need a mag or it's not a magazine, but a series of short, uh, there was a short story supplement that was released by Games Workshop that's called Hammer and Bolter. And there is a specific Hammer and Bolter story about Lewin Langker that is like, pivotal to understanding the character um and like giving you all the details you could possibly want about him like why is he called Layanker is basically what the story is about and it's super good um and like i didn't even know that existed until like not that long ago i mean i'll, I'll put it this way i'll put it this way that was such like a that was such like a hidden thing even andy didn't know it existed <laughs> until i showed it to him like, that's how much of a deep cut uh, some of the stuff is. So, um, anywho, so I'm really looking forward to getting back to those kinds of characters and factions and stuff. Um, do I think the DLCs will end after 6? No, I, like, uh, Legend, if you're talking about the Legend video, anything that he said as far as, like, like, I haven't watched it, but, like, any, I, I've, I've seen people bitching about it, or not, or worrying about it on Reddit. Um, because for some reason I torture myself and still go on the Total War subreddit, even though <laughs> it's usually not good. But, um, anything that Legend said is speculation, or he's just kind of memeing, um, and people don't realize that he's memeing, because it literally just happened and nobody knows what's going on. Um, that being said, um, I have zero doubt that Total War Warhammer is still the flagship um is going to be the flagship game for creative assembly uh probably for the next couple of years at least uh so i i don't think there's any hard limit right now on like oh they're only gonna do x amount more dlcs i don't think that's possible to predict right now um uh that would uh yeah no that would take um that would require levels of clairvoyance that i think no man has um, especially cause the, I mean, with, especially with the layoffs, when you're keeping in mind the layoffs, we, we don't know what the impact on those are going to be. Uh, we know that the, uh, this past week's layoffs are going to hit CA reasonably hard. Um, but I doubt personally, I feel like that's going to have less of an impact on the total war Warhammer, and it's going to have more of an impact on the anything else. Like, if they're working on, like, a historical game, or if they're, which, I mean, you know, it, I, I would say it's a pretty fair bet there's somebody at CA working on, like, a uh, Total War 40k. Like, those projects are probably going to be significantly impacted. Um, the Total War Warhammer ones, though, I, I, don't, I don't think are going to be as bothered, um, just because those are kind of the headliners at the moment. But nothing's for sure everything that i'm saying and anyone else is saying at this point is purely speculation so you know take it, it's kind of like take the points that you think are reasonable and throw all the other ones in the trash because that's about as good as you're gonna get uh, there's no i don't think there's any clear right or wrong answers it's just about how you feel about it for better or worse oh i guess that's why i came this way 
Because I guess I'm... Why... What was I doing? Why did I go around the mountains? Uh, I guess I could send a Lozen to deal with this. Nah, I think I'd rather deal with it myself. Uh, yeah, I'll deal with it myself. Because <laughs> the uh, then I can stop off by... I can stop off Just at the... Just a uh, three years I have been here now. Thanks for the many, three many hours of entertainment years. and Holy for getting me into sweet fantasy. Sweet God. P.S. Citra for Unleaf. Uh, you can use it. Thank you so much for the three years. Holy fuck, dude. That's crazy. Uh, that is super crazy. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. Um, such a for you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Zar94, how much for a Neferata remaster? Ugh. Um, I mean, the good news for you, if you're a big Neferata fan, is that I definitely 100% want to do a Neferata remaster. Um, I, I don't feel comfortable being like, oh, like this much for when I would do it or this much for when I would not do it. Cause Neferata, Neferata's hard, man. Um, she's really difficult. Um, because the amount that's been written about her that disagrees with itself is just obscene. Um, like, nothing against the guy personally, but the, the amount of, like, just r absolute fucking madness that, um, um, fucking Josh Reynolds threw into the mix because he decided to, uh, because of his Masters of Death series is, uh, I, I can't even describe it. I can't even describe it. How much of, like, a pain in the ass he created uh, for anyone trying to follow Neferata's story. It is a mess. Um, oh my god, Dynamo is it a mess. 95 cheered. X100. Hey, Satek. I'm currently creating a fan-made faction based on West Africa. During Ooh. research, I found a mythical creature called the Ninki Nanku, which is described as a giant reptilian, almost dragon-like creature that lives in swamps. Oh, well, that sounds really fucking cool uh, and right up my alley. Richard I do say so myself. Joins the red host. <laughs> and I do. Spawn. <laughs> Um, Sithric, thank you so much for the 20 months, and Morning to Christ, thank you for the 33 months. God, some of you guys have been around here for way too long. Diamond, that sounds fucking awesome, dude. Oh, oh, sorry, there was more to it. Um, I didn't realize TTS cut you off. Uh, I'm thinking I could reinterpret it as a smaller species of Dread Soaring. Do you think this would fit? Yeah, I think that could fit really, really well. Um, I mean, Dread, yeah, yeah, I mean, that would work. Um, I, I, it would depend on what you want the creature to function as. Like, if you mean a Dread Soaring as in, like, you have these creatures that are considered sacred that people like go out of their way to try and uh, find it and like offer it things and like put like sacred icons or armor or whatever on it and yada yada yada. Uh, I think that could work really really well. Um, but um, I would also note that um, the Dread Saurian I think is a better template for when you're trying to create a creature that is that more heavily revolves around um like being a large sacred entity um as opposed to say um uh as opposed to say like um if you want it to be more like a native creature that sort of wanders the lands and people respect it but are also very wary of it um, you might be better suited looking at more neutralish creatures like a basilisk for a template um, or maybe a quaddle even um, if it's like a kind of a guardian of nature type figure um, it, it would just depend on what your goal is as far as like what is the creature doing and what's its temperament and yada 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 um, but yeah I think you know I think a lot of those could work quite well okay so let's get territorial consignments because i am very big on that whole thing and i'm just gonna keep just gobbling up technology here um 
Thank you for not being part of the Doomsayer cult. Yeah, no, I am. I am nothing if not practical. Um, which a, a lot of people think that I'm. Well, I think I'm nothing but practical. I th there. I know there are plenty of people out there who think that I'm like a shill or, you know, that I'm like a slave for CA or whatever silly nonsense they've got going on in their head. Um, but no, you're not going to find doom and gloom shit here because I, I just don't think it's realistic. I mean, it's not even a matter of like, um, yeah, I just, I, I, <laughs> I just, I just think it's silly. Um, I'm not really using any of these yet. I mean, I could upgrade my... There we go. Sundering attacks on melee is nice. Um, alright, hold on. Let me try and get caught up on stuff here. Um, Dirthu video made me cry, and then two days after I, uh, I watched you and did the vote for the Dirthu stream. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, I hope you appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I will say, I, I don't know if this is true. But I really, really hope that those of y'all that have been enjoying lore beards are able to really sit down and enjoy it in tandem Diamond with, um, like, regular video content. The plan and the is two of them by the Nomo, a kinda... fishman-like species also from West African mythology, who oh. are allies of the fan faction and use, like, the lizard menu, stegans, etc. Yeah, that sounds fucking awesome, Dino Man. That sounds great, yeah. Um... And Sulter, thank you for the 34 months. Yeah, please keep me in the loop on that. Um, actually, one of the things I really want to do with Andy that I need to talk to him about is it would be very, very fun. Um, it would be very fun one day to do a, uh, I think, an episode where we just use, show off people's fan creations um, and give, like, feedback, like, constructive feedback. Um, I, if Andy would be down for that. I don't know if he would. There might be, he might be like no this is a bad idea because xyz and i'd be like oh yes of course that is a terrible idea i'm sorry i came up with that idiot idea uh you know what why don't we send him why don't we send him north well no i guess the tan could go north because that's gonna be a shorter trip okay so let okay yeah, 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 yeah. okay so let's let's go let's let's go south and where's the other one it's castle drakenhof okay Cool. We're going to use hobgoblins to terrorize vampire counts. I love it. All right. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Would love if another company bought CA. I, I don't know if you'd love that as much as you think you might. <laughs> um, like, the, the problem... I mean, the problem was hyenas at the end of the day. Like, hyenas was the big mistake, which was, it, it, as far as I can tell, some idiot... Um, that was very high up was like, oh, look, these types of games make money. We should get in on that, even though the market was so grossly oversaturated. And CA Peasant? was Peasant? just not going to be able to compete in that market. But, you know, unfortunately, stupid people be stupid. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, what I was saying is hopefully y'all really enjoy lore beards in addition to the stuff that me and Andy do separately. Um, I'm re lore beard seems to be reasonably popular. Um, I'm try. I, I need to try and maybe think of ways to make it more approachable, or like how to bring in more new people. Um, because I love lore beards. Um, but I, I don't. I, I, I want to try and figure out what to get in front of more people. One guy you but you know, one step at a time. WTB tale of many lore beards. Also, Plaza, don't forget my redeem from earlier. Don't forget your redeem from earlier. Like. Uh, oh god. Which... Which redeem are we talking about? Is it, Wait, is it a Twitch redeem? Ooh, Gauntlets of Bazarek the Cruel. Very cool. Um, JF, what if you can customize the army color of your units other than just faction flags? Also learn so much in your videos. Thank you. Well, JF, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, second of all, there's been pretty heavy rumors of um like getting an army painter type thing in the game at some point it's like one of the most requested features i think for a lot of people uh, you know it's just an army painter 
Um, I I think it is something we will get, but I think it will be literally the very, 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 very last DLC that's added to the game. Um, because it's kind of one of those things where you probably don't want to waste your time doing it uh, until you have done everything else. Because, you know, the second that you add in, like, another piece of content um, that is not the, like, is different or, like, evolves on it, well, great. Now you've got to, like, add more shit to it. Um, so it's probably definitely one of those things that you're you're better off waiting um, until, um, until the end. You know what I mean? This gives me raw resources. Does, oh, my God. It gives me so many raw materials um okay i'm spending so much money all right uh pa, 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 pa. we're actually losing raw materials now that's not bueno i need more raw materials and i'm, I'm about to be spending more raw materials okay so we need more mines um wretched foul is a thing. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Red host. Um, spawn. Who is the best chaos? None of this has a nosance. Worshipping wolf. Uh get fucked, Mr. Vampire, sir. Give me labor. I need labors. Alright. Um Who's the best chaos worshipping... None of this hashit nonsense worshipping dwarf. I mean, I think my favorite one of the chaos worshipping dwarfs is the... That's not, like, a chaos dwarf. Um, is the... I mean, the coolest one is, I think, undeniably... Um, oh, shit. What's his name? Um, uh, oh, my God. I'm having such a brain fart all of a sudden. It would be... Uh, what's his face? That the Kraken Lord, the guy that made the Kraken, Tordrick Hackhart. Th thank you. Yes, Hackhart would absolutely be the coolest, like undeniably, um, because he's just fucking awesome. And uh, like, if you've never, he's like integrated into his ship, so he's like super horrific and nightmarish looking. Um, but uh yeah he he would be he would definitely be my top pick for like most badass okay we can finally get some more upgraded troops so we can get some infernal iron sworn we can get some fire glaives um let's switch out one blunderbuss and one uh, let's get rid of all the regular great weapons and that'll give us our fire glaives oh, i could get oh man i can get lots of cool shit uh i could get kadai i could get bull centaurs um I think some bull centaurs would not go amiss. I mean, I kind of like what we have, to be honest. I feel like for this army, we can drop the Kadai and go double bull centaur. So let's take one that's anti-infantry and one that's anti-large. Oh, I could get the Immortals. Okay, give me the Immortals. And then... Uh, we could probably switch out the Blazing Beards. Actually, I don't hate this. I don't hate this, because then we have the one bull centaur thing that's just kind of like a really good... If the enemy ends up having anti-large bullshit, we can kind of deal with it. Um, yeah, that'll work. Um, 
All hail Krim Gelto, the beak slon mate of Loek. Jesus Christ, Hammond, you're getting some really dense, <laughs> dense lore on your uh, your heresies there. I mean, good for you, good for you, but <laughs> also, ugh, ugh. Um. Let's see. Have I seen the Old World Campaign mod? Yes, I have. Um, overall, I like it. Um, uh, I Granted, I, I, don't, I haven't played it since they updated it a decent bit. Um, so I don't know if it's like changed dramatically since then. Um, I, I like it overall. Um, however, I do wish... Uh, the, the only thing I don't like about it, um, is like some of the character choices they went with and like where they put some of those characters. What is this? Wasn't a huge, huge fan of some of those decisions. Um, like th they have red eye mountain on the map, but didn't put any green skin characters there last I checked, which I find to be very silly. I wish I could manually enter a number because it's like I don't want to. Like, ugh. hold on. Let's let's start that over because I think it. We no okay nope I can only send that okay that's fine okay whatever uh go. Um. But yeah, over overall I like it quite a bit. Um, there, there are some, there are some slight things I wish were different, but overall, I think it's, I think it's quite good. Um, that's just flat income. What do I, uh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Give me money! Um, this says I have two seats I could claim. Oh, I guess these are seats I could steal. Yeah. Eh. Eh. Yeah, no, I don't need those. Mistress of skulls. Uh, yes, I would like to be friends with Valkia, because then she can guard my butt from that angle and get another trade agreement. Dynamo ninety five cheered. X one hundred. How much do we know about the plane of Tuskers and Tlaqua? How much do we know about the plane of Tuskers and Tlaqua? Not a lot. Uh, barely anything, actually. The Southlands are extremely poorly explored to kind of a almost comical degree. Um, like, the amount that's known about them is just is just sad um, in that it's just not, not very much. Um, you know, I, I think the... Um, I think the hope would be to... Um, get to know quite a bit about them but as of right now um they're significantly more of a mystery um like you can make little you can make guesstimations um you know on what the names might mean but there's very little definitive information uh thank you for the bits by the way um have I watched the new Godzilla vs. King Kong movie yet? No! Uh, I would like to very, very much. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to go see it. Uh, I'd like to do that very soon. Because uh, I'd like to either go see it with my brother or maybe some of my IRL buds. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, I really want to do. But... As of yet, the opportunity has not presented itself. Though I should probably start bugging the shit out of my buds. Um, because I love them very much. But they, they are, like, it is not unusual for us to go a concerningly, like, like, you know, like, days or weeks without directly speaking to one another. Because everyone's just kind of busy. X150. What is one thing that makes you hopeful for the future of Warhammer Fantasy? Uh, I mean, t mm, to be very blunt and honest, just the fact that we are getting a significant amount of focus thanks to Warhammer the Old World, alo that alone 
gives me a significant amount of hope for the future. Um, like, a massive amount. Um, I am extremely excited uh, for the future of Warhammer Fantasy. There are elements of it that make me nervous. Um, there's also... Um, it's there. There's like an annoying number of things that I really want to like talk about very overtly because I want to make videos on them. Um, but it is, I want to kind of wait until I'm done with Queek, but I don't mind being kind of blunt about it as well in the sense that like there is some weird drama type shit going on at Games Workshop relating to the old world of like conflicts between studios um just really childish bullshit um that i want to make like a full dedicated video to talk about um because i have had the opportunity to talk with some individuals who will remain anonymous um about these things and what's been going on um and it basically just boils down to that the old world has the potential to be something absolutely amazing and incredible if if and only if um the those responsible against workshop can get their their personal pride out of the way um and there are some other like kind of concerning ways that games workshop evaluate success that may need to be evaluated as well um but it's like i want gw to be very yeah. successful with the old world and there are some things they're doing that is very stupid because they're all they're doing is kind of kneecapping themselves um in pursuit of like personal accomplishments which is not great um, that being said, I am very, very hopeful just to have the setting back in our hands. Um, and I'm really, really hoping and feel pretty, pretty good about Thrones of Decay. Um, I really am hoping and hoping and hoping, but, um, that it's going to be like a massive knockout of the park, um, uh, because we, we really need a winner, you know, from the Total War side of things. We could, we could really use a solid capstone uh to say like all right you know we're back in it we're back on top of the world let's 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 keep it going because i know a lot of people have been stressed and worried since uh shadows so hopefully we'll get some really good news in the coming uh week or two Hopefully no later than that, um, but well, I I, th I think we will be able to confidently say we'll know more um, in the coming week, and we'll go from there. You know, faction wide casualty replenishment is very nice. Uh, Brother Red, thank you so much for the sixteen months. Appreciate it. Name a lord, Lord Rishi. Raishish hut. Okay. I don't think this guy ever received an official. Oh, wait, no, that's a convoy. Uh, Pinkerton, I know, is an actual name name. Uh, Gnome Captain, are you cool with it being a. Like, a convoy general? Or do you want it to be like a general general? Because I don't have any general generals right now. I only have convoy generals at the moment. Oh, it's Hammond. Okay. Well, it says Gnome Captain. I'm going to read out the whole name. Uh, what is all this? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to pull up. Sorry, one second. Let me pull up the actual Twitch regimes off to the side so I can see them. Because right now they're not really showing up for me. 
There we go. Lore fact. What is a fun fact about one of the presumptive legendary lords of the DLC? Um, what's a fun fact about one of the hopeful lords of the DLC? Uh, I would probably say a fun fact about one of the lords. Hmm. Um, I mean, mo so I'll give two just because I, I would say they're both not necessarily. They're, I, I would say they're both reasonably well known, but, you know, I'll give you a two for one because of that. But the first one being that Tarmacon, uh, who is almost for sure who we're going to get. Like, I, I would be shocked, shocked, beyond shocked if we did not get Tarmacon. Um, one of the really, really cool things about Tarmacon, uh, that lot, not a lot of people necessarily know, but if you, you know, if you're super aware of the character, you probably know, but I'll bring it up anyway, is of course that he is, um, not very big, like the actual guy. Um, he's much smaller than everybody thinks he is. Um, because in truth, uh, where a lot of people see like the giant guy or the giant ogre or whatever. He's actually just a little maggot um, Like he's not tiny he, for, for a maggot. He's absolutely gigantic um, But in uh, uh, He's only about I want to say he's about like two to three feet long something like that um, and He just puppets bodies around because he literally just his whole thing is he's he's kind of like a chest burster from Alien, except for larger. But instead of it being that he gets in your body and then he incubates and then he bursts out of your chest when you when you know when he wants to be born, instead it's that he hangs out inside of a corpse and he puppets it around by controlling it from the inside. And then if you kill that body, um, he bursts out of the chest like a chest burster. And will latch onto your face, throat area, and he eats his way inside of you. So he he'll leap out and grab onto you right around here-ish, and then he just eats his way in. Um, and then once he does that, uh, you will die horribly. Uh, and then he just controls your body and moves it around like a puppet. Um, that's his mo. Um, but, uh, that being said, it worked for him until he got greedy, um, or he got arrogant is a better way to put it. Because what ended up happening with Tarmacon was that when he got his final body, which was the ogre body, Tarmacon fell for kind of a really, really fun, I think it's actually a very good bit of character writing, where as long as Tarmacon was willing to keep actively switching bodies... He was basically unstoppable because nobody knew the truth of what he was. Um, and by the time they figured it out, you know, it was too late. But um, when he got the ogre body, Tarmacon became obsessed with how powerful it was because it was significantly stronger than his, uh, his usual bodies. Oh, if I come in this way... There's already a hole in the door, which is so lovely. I can just flood inside. And there's very little they can do to stop me. But we'll send our stealth units around the other way. That way they can grab objectives in the event that the vampires prove annoying. Um, but yeah, once, once Tarmacon got the ogre body, he liked it so much because the body was so powerful that he refused to leave it. Um, he was just like, nope, this is my body now. Like, I, this is, this is it. I, this is the ultimate, most powerful form I will ever obtain. Therefore, this is, I refuse to leave this body. I will stay in this body forever. And because he did that, that body, although Tarmacon can puppet a corpse, he cannot reanimate it or, like, make it stronger, um, than it already was. Which means that, um, ultimately, uh, it just got weaker and weaker and weaker as it was rotting away, uh, so that when he finally got in his big final, uh, fight with Elspeth, 
uh, Von Draken's champion, Theodore Bruckner, um, he died because all the because he was not able to successfully defeat Bruckner, despite the fact he was puppeting, you know, an entire ogre body. So he should have been able to win that fight, even though Bruckner is a beast. But still, that's nothing compared to like a super. Bruckner's nothing compared to like a super powerful chaos champion in the body of a goddamn ogre tyrant. But Bruckner wins and forces Tarmacon out of that body, which leads to him being killed. Um, because Elspeth had designed kind of like a, a trap uh, for him. But uh, so there, there's your fun fact about Tarmacon. JF just started my so first Lizardman. One day could I, I, think I, could I out on a month. see some of your Seraphon? Yeah, of anyway, course. Just got her and feel super down about all the doom saying going around with TWW3. Could you say some reassuring words about the future of TWW3? Uh, okay, so first of all, JF. Thank you so much for the super chat. Really, really appreciates the super chats, my dude, uh, or dudes. Um, it means the world to me. I really appreciate the support. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, second of all, um, will I ever show my Seraphon? Sure. Um, I can actually probably do an update here pretty soon. Um, uh, if, like, you're like, oh, man, or, like, if you want to see some of my minis, I, I could post, like, a bunch of my minis here. Uh, later today on uh, Twitter. I haven't done that in forever, so yeah, that's fine. Um, and then uh, Awesome Lion Saurus. Uh, finally caught you so I could resub. I think I missed out on a month. Why is it automatic? Pri Prime subs are not automatic. Um, Prime subs... Uh, I I've had this problem with some streamers that I use my Prime sub for. Um, you have to do them manually. You can do it manually even if they're not online, but you have to do it yourself. Um... Which is just the way it works. Um, but uh, um, as far as um, reassuring words. So um, I will say that as someone who has a lot of friends over at Creative Assembly and who frankly keeps a very, very, very close eye on everything going on at Creative Assembly. Um, if shit was gonna like, if sh it, like if it was like, oh, everything's burning down around us, like this is it, this is the end of days. Um, while I would not want to like panic, I would address it. Like, I would come on and, like, make a video and be like, hey, like, you know, there are things that we as a community probably need to prepare for. Um, but I don't think that's happening. Um, I do think that, you know, we did get some really, really bad news. And I do think it's worth being like, yeah, this shit fucking sucks. Like, genuinely, this is a bummer. Um, there's... A lot of really good people at CA who are gonna lose their jobs, which is fucking awful, especially because like it feels like we just got done with the redundancy process from the last major set of layoffs. Um, but unfortunately, you know, Sega of Europe decided <laughs> to just do this um, now. Um, I have no idea why. Um, I I I hope that this is the end of it. You know, um, what I'm hoping, like, I don't want to say what is going to happen because I can't predict the future, but what I hope is going to happen is that, um, this is going to be the last big punch before we finally get to turn the page where they're going to announce Thrones of Decay. Hopefully it's going to be super awesome and it's going to have like, you know, a lot of really cool units and other goodies that people have been really, really wanting. Um, and then from there will be, uh, you know, it'll make, they'll, hopefully it'll be great and they'll sell a lot of, a lot of copies. So it'll make a lot of money. And because it made a lot of money, they can go, oh, thank God we're secure now. We can start working on the next thing, which then also proceeds to make money. And then they go on to the next thing and the next thing. And 
You know, it's like whenever you take whenever you take a wound, right? If something bad happens in your life and you get messed up, like you get in a car accident, right? And you get messed up a little bit and you get injured. It fucking sucks. Like, it really sucks. Especially if it's not just a one-time thing. Like, not only did you get in a car accident and you got hurt, but then, like, you know, a month later, some guy, like, steals your bike or you fall off your bike or whatever. Like, yeah, that sucks. But it, it'll get better, you know. Um, I, I don't think CA is in any risk of, like, ceasing to exist as a company. Um, I also haven't really heard anything that indicates that, like, Sega has any interest in selling them. So I don't think that's going to happen. Um, if anything, it seems like Sega has kind of turned its attention to Crave Assembly and said, like, all right, <laughs> like, for the European side, y'all are one of our best things. So how about y'all just make some of that Total War Warhammer magic and don't do anything else? Um, which, I, as, as bizarre as it may sound, from CA's perspective, is probably a good thing. Of like, okay, yeah, we can do that. Like, that is... That, that would be the best thing to do right now. All right, there we go. The Brazier of Gazool. Uh, yeah, let's just use it for the drill. Another drill piece. A second relic bound with a demon to power the furnaces of the colossal drill. Um, so yeah. Yet, Hopefully that helps. Um, I would say if you're someone that is easily... And this, you know, this isn't a bad thing. This is just a matter of if your personality. Um, if you are someone that is easily upset by, like, particularly dour or, you know, like, dooms, doom splaining type stuff, I would stay off the subreddit and also stay off the forums. Um, you know, those are... Those are probably places that you will want to avoid because their natural inclination, even I mean, even at the best of times, their inclination tends to be very doom and gloom. Um, so, you know, when things are not going great, I would not walk in there if you are someone that that is likely to genuinely affect you um, because you're not going to find anything good. <laughs> Um, so try, try to, try, try to know yourself and know what, what you can handle awesome and what you can't and, uh, X100. you know, keep that in mind. Thanks for me. I just want more and more content for my favorite game, which is Warhammer three, 10 Eric more years of Doom. DLC, please. <laughs> 10, 10 more years. Uh, I don't know if we'll get that much, but, uh, yeah, uh, I definitely, I definitely hope for, uh, much, much, much more would be nice. Would be nice. Um, uh, super chat, Phil, how do you feel about Elspeth nowadays? Seeing as you have strong feelings about it, would I rewrite her if I had the chance to? Uh, I, I like Elspeth. I'm fine with Elspeth. Um, there was a point a, a good while back where I really didn't like her because I felt very strongly that she was a very extreme character in that she was very she was very powerful and a lot of her powers um were heavily based on and or uh taken from and or inspired by however you want to look at it uh but like a lot of her theming and design was around non-human elements of her and the fact that she's kind of like borderline immortal and or she just is immortal is actually a better way to put it um, like she's immortal, uh, essentially, and she's like this deathless rape type lady who's more, almost more undead than she is human. So I felt like she didn't really exemplify what it is to be an empire character. Um, but I do not feel that strongly about it. Simultaneously, the subreddit is full of nothing but CA shields and nothing but CA haters and doom sales, at least according to the subreddit. Well, I, yeah, the subreddit. Man, you want you want to talk about like a self-hating culture? Whew, the subreddit is uh it is something else. <laughs> it is something else. Um didn't y'all it didn't always used to be that way. I actually used to comment on there fairly often back in the day. I don't anymore. <laughs> but 
Um, yeah, it is. It's something. Um, but uh, would I re rewrite Elspeth? No, I wouldn't. Um, I would. I would expand more on Elspeth. Definitely. Um, I, I would do a lot. I, I would want to expand significantly more um, on elements about the character. But I, I do not think I would rewrite her. No. Um, generally speaking, I don't like the idea of rewriting characters. Um... I like to try I would I would much rather like try to find a way to make them work as they are. Um which is not always easy. Um but I, I'm I'm far more okay with Elspeth than I used to be. Um and now it's become much more of a meme. Um which you know, all all you can do when you're dealing with memes of that caliber is just embrace it, right? Alright, and we're gonna pump a lot of slaves into other stuff. Alright, Pinkerton has taken over the mountains, which is good. Satan's riding north. I think we're pretty much at the point where we can start recruiting a third army. Awesome line series cheered. X100. On a Brain more happy note, months, I'm probably. enjoying my You Aren't Boat campaign in the realms of chaos. Though a bit sad that the last the last Dawi faction correct Katarin got wiped out. The last surviving Dawi are two units of slayers I recruited through the through the Allegiance system. Oh, that's kind of tragic. I mean, that's very fitting though. Like it's tragic but fitting. Um that like the last remaining characters or the last remaining dwarfs in existence in your campaign's world are slayers. Like I do like that storytelling, like that layer of tragedy. I think that's actually really fun. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's sad, but... <laughs> Alright, let's head up into the mountains. Let's turn this into an outpost, because I need... Ooh, I could raise this, though. Yeah, I'm going to raise it. Uh, we will we will come back for Oakenhammer and turn it into an outpost, but I need so much stuff right now. Oh, yes, we've got access to all the sexy upgrades now. Uh, let's get our defensive upgrades for our hobgoblins. Yeah, because we want to go kill Barden Brewhammer over here. Oh, that's not good. Six to nine, nice. Uh, let's get rid of the necromancer. Let's upgrade. Nope, we're not doing that. We want to upgrade the drill. There we go. Yep. We want to get the drill to the max level. We'll even spend slaves on it. There we go. Upgrade that camp. Uh, the marble's almost done. That'll be nice. We're going to need a lot more labor there, though. But we're, we're doing great on labor. Um, let's get some more conclave influence. Let's even send some of these workers. How many? Wait. How many do I need to activate these? 200? Okay. Let's send two there, two there, accept, and then give me more conclave. Um, because we're, tr uh, we want we want more three hundred power seats. The doom of hatchet is an explosion. Okay. Because we're almost to the point where we can start confederating the other chaos dwarfs, which will be super nice. Oop, what did I do here? Oh, I see. There we go. Alright. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Alright, so... We need a Sorcerer Prophet Lord. Uh, Natalie, thank you Natalie so much for the bits! Cheered. X1000. I should read the Gatrek books, but did Felix put Romantic in there? Romantic with Ulrika. Yes! Um, yes. Well, mm, I don't want to give, like, all the spoilers, but I'll give you a rough thing that there is a very strong will-they-won't-they storyline with Felix and Ulrika, especially after she becomes a vampire. 
it, I will say it is very sad. <laughs> like, it is... Uh, it is not a happy story. So, <laughs> just, you know, be aware of that. Uh, especially if you decide to read it from... Uh, wow, cooldown to all spells. But I don't really want a metal wizard. Uh, especially if you decided to read uh, read it from Ulrika's perspective uh, through her own trilogy. Um, it is kind of a bummer. <laughs> to put it simply. Uh, give me a hubristic. Wait, why did I go here? Eh, whatever, I'm not, I'm not a smart man. It's fine. Uh, ba -ba 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 uh, let's see. I think uh i think we'll take logistician to start because casualty replenishment is king all right we'll deal with him in a little bit you're going north uh i think we're good lord quizzerinus thank you so much for 31 months really appreciate it boop boop yourself um oh dynamo 95 cheered well it's 100 Kasabar seems like it could be a really interesting city given that it sits on the edge of Araby and Hekera, the Southlands, and is reasonably near to both Sutomberg and Karakjorn. Huh. That might be a few too many ogres for this caravan to deal with. <laughs> that might be. That might be a little. a little much. Um. Huh. Huh. Um, yeah, they've even got lead belchers. Well, rip that particular caravan. Oh, uh, that's brutal. Uh, that was painful. Okay, so, all right, now, now Scrag has pissed me off. Okay, that's going to be a thing now. Uh, let's see. Have I considered doing unboxings and reviews for Age of Sigmar? Um, have I, 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 I guess, um, I, I guess I've thought about it. it. It's not something that I think I'm going to do anytime super soon. Um, it is certainly like occurred to me as a possibility. Um, but, uh, like I don't, I don't get stuff from games workshop. Um, everything I buy, I have to pay for myself, um, which is, you know, a relatively strong limiting factor. Um, that being said, I would like to talk more about AOS related things. That's certainly true. Null underscore Captain underscore Hammond cheered. X100. All hail Premlo, the Sage of Skeptic. No! Also, where's my rename, Lord? Is he dead? Oh, no, I haven't made him yet. There he is. I wonder. I was talking about Pinkerton. Pinkerton's still alive. Um, okay, hold on. I need to clear all these out. What do you want it? Lord Ray... Rayesh... Hashit? What? Let's see, if I cheat like this, will it look fine? Or will it look weird? Nah, it looks a little weird. But I bet I can do it. There you go. Um, okay. And then we want to not worry about intercept battles. Okay, so we need to probably not send any convoys um, west for a while. Because it seems like the west is going to be fairly anti-us. At least for a hot bit. Um, <laughs> we want to go, we need to go north with our convoys. Okay, nope, I, I, I must resist the urge to spend raw materials because I want to save up for getting the Gates of Zard to level 5. Oh yeah, we can send a new convoy. Alright, so we don't want to go west. We can go north or we can go east. Um... I actually think going east would be good on this one. 
because I need all the raw materials I can get right now, and that's a pretty short convoy, so we can just go there. It's fine. Um, Kasabar seems like it could be a really interesting city, given that it's the age of, uh, given that it's on the edge of Araby, Nahakar, the Southlands is reasonably near to both Sudanburg and Karakzor. Yeah, Ka I mean, Kasabar, Kasabar is interesting. Um, it just is. Um, some of the more recent information that's come out from, like, the old world, um, has suggested, um, things that, to the extent that basically Kasabar, um, it is... It technically is part of the Hekara, and it is technically a tomb city, but it has a unique relationship among the tomb cities because it's so far south um, that it had a different and unique relationship with the rest of the Hekara. Um, as far as what that might be, is not super well explored, but there are some interesting ideas you can go with, uh, like Kasabar um, in some versions of the stories has a bit of a stronger relationship with the um uh it has more of a relationship with um the desert tribes um than you might expect um where the people of Kasabar, because they live so far out of the way um they had a much stronger relationship with the desert itself because that part of their lands was desert even like back in those ancient times um when uh the desert was not as big of a thing because nagash obviously had nuked everything from orbit yet what is a skink's favorite vegetable bok choy <laughs> bok choy i like that one <laughs> Jethro, I, I like that. That's that's cute. Good job. Good job, Jethro. Slight, a little, small applause for you. Good job. Good job. Awesome line, Saurus cheered. X100. I've been having a lot of thematic storytelling with my campaign. Currently trying to save the last of the Empire factions, Wissenland, Talabikland, and Hockland by sending my sister. Meowing across the what's the sea called? Um, what's the sea above Kislev slash Norska? That is the Sea of Chaos. Um, save the few Empire factions left. We got intercepted by Valkia and a few of her very strong and elite army side retreat group. Yeah, I I personally enjoy doing that quite a bit as well. Um, like I often will have a lot of fun trying to. Like I'll usually pick a faction that I'm like, this is my baby now. Um, and do my damnedest to protect them from the, the, the horrors, the horrors of the world. Um, not the, <laughs> not the horrors of the world. Um, but, um, it, you know, when you kind of add in your own little role-playing difficulty modifiers like that, um, it can add a lot of really fun elements to your, uh, to your campaigns in my experience. Certainly don't have to, um, but. I do always kind of enjoy like trying to form some notable alliance or relationship with certain AI factions. Now, whether or not that's fun for you is definitely going to be a personal matter, but uh, yeah, you know, you can add some different kinds of like difficulty modifiers and such. Um, let's see. I guess I can. Awesome line, Saurus cheered. X100. Oh, interesting. Getting invested okay. and involved in trying to create a story just makes the game so much more fun. Less than three. Yeah, I wish I was better at editing. I would do more lore type Dynamo campaigns in this game. 95 cheered. X100. That's confusing. The wiki says that Kar Sabar was an Hecaron city but has since been settled by Arabians, but refused to join Jafar's war. Has that since been reconned? Uh, Dynamite, I would say in the old world, yes, that has been Man retconned because there, it is now just a tomb, it's a tomb city. You and Andy need some sleep today. Plaza reread the older message to Tech Chan and Yike and Yu Wu. Um, um, though, actually, hold on. Let me, let me double check just to make sure because I can, I can double check. I go to the old world dot com. And I go to their map of the old world. And I go all the way down to Kasabar. Which is way down here. Yeah. Yeah. So Kasabar, the Temple of Sorrow. Hidden among the drifting sand dunes of the Great Desert. Uh, Great Sandy Desert lies the city of Kasabar. It's tumbled towers 
covered in strange glyphs carved by a forgotten race. And on the Kasabar like faction uh, symbol, you get Kasabar. This is one of the most ancient city-states of all Nehekara. Kasabar, the city of Kasabar, is said to have been founded even before Kimri. So it's like the origin city for the people of Nehekara that emerged from the jungles in like ancient times. Um, but there's nothing on there that says anything about... Um, there's nothing on there that says anything about uh, anything to do with um arabians so i i would say the arabians having refounded it is probably no longer canon uh because it it's a tomb city that has nobody in it all right oh uh, that asshole's gonna help zafar oh that's so stupid Hmm, I don't... I'm, I'm curious if he'll move. So why don't we... Why don't we lay siege to it and see what happens. Will I ever do AOS lore videos? Yes, 100%. Huh? Yes, sir. Probably s sooner than you may suspect. Awesome. But yes, Saurus especially with the new edition starting. It's 100. Uh -huh, uh -huh, it's uh -huh. funny. Prior to TW Warhammer 1, I didn't even know about the Warhammer setting. Through it, I got a bit more invested, found you, learned a lot more about it, and now I am on book 13 of Gutrek and Felix audiobook app. <laughs> awesome line, Saurus. Hey, that's awesome, dude. Uh, I'm so invested in the world setting characters. By the way, Tells Games Workshop to make audiobooks of the Ulrika books. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, the, the Ulrika series desperately could use a, a really good, um, thing there. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Um, no translations for Ulrika makes Sotek a sad boy. Come on, GW, get off your asses. All right. So we need to, what, claim Karak Doom? Is that what it is? Yes. We get the hammer of Smednir. Cause for thank you for the 19 months. Um please read the older message Sotek from Hammond. All hail criminal the sage of Skeggy. Where's my renamed lord? Is he dead? No, I read that one. If you're talking about that one. And hold on. If you're talking about the character you just named, no, he's still alive. If you're talking about the um the Pinkerton character, which I think might have been yours, he's still alive. Um so yeah, I don't know. Mine uh let's sack it first. Because I do want to maximize profits, because we are capitalist dwarfs, after all. Awesome line, Saurus cheered. X100, don't need it translated. I'm just too lazy to read, and I love listening to the audiobooks while working out. Mind and body, or something. That 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 works. That works as well. You know, I, that I also sympathize with. I too am a very lazy person. <laughs> Which is why being my own boss, uh, because of YouTube stuff, is sometimes is not ideal. <laughs> because, man, I wish I was better at telling myself to get shit done. <laughs> um, I really want the Temple of Hashet, so I guess I'll save up for that. Um, here, yeah, that's fine. Uh, is it the fans' fault who react badly to anything new that caused the end of Warhammer Fantasy Battle? No, kind no, not really. Um, at, so okay, so the death of Warhammer Fantasy Battle is a super infamous situation of the chicken or the egg, right? Did Warhammer Fantasy end because it was not popular? Did it end? Or well, so the the. Frank thing is that Warhammer Fantasy was not making the money that Games Workshop wanted it to make. 
um, the people that were in charge of Game Workshop at the time. And they came to the decision, um, in my opinion, very stupidly, that the, the best thing to do, because they did not like how it was doing, would be to... Um, the best thing to do would be to just destroy the universe and make a new one where they felt they would have more freedom uh, to essentially, at the, at the onset, basically take space marines and put them into a fantasy setting. Because if they could use maybe space marines, that would, uh, you know, oh, people love space marines. So if we just put fantasy space marines, that'll make the game more popular, which, spoilers, didn't work at the time. Um, it, it took a lot of fixing to get AOS to a point where it was good and people actually started really playing it a lot. Um, but it, that's neither here nor there. Um, the important part of the story um, is that why did Warhammer Fantasy struggle so much um toward in the end and it kind of boils down to a situation of like i said the chicken or the egg where a lot of people will go oh well warhammer fantasy just wasn't making enough money because it just wasn't popular and people like it just wasn't a popular game so therefore um you know it fell apart because nobody wanted to play it um but my counter argument would be that a lot of people didn't nobody wanted to play it because the game was not being properly supported at all um games workshop did like a super shit job of supporting it and just wasn't really interested in putting in the effort uh to like make it a fun game uh and making sure that there was like good constant updates to the point where they didn't even bother finishing eighth edition but like if you just go read the rules for eighth edition you can tell from the 8th edition rules that GW was not making a game that had good rules for longevity. Of that, like, every edition at that point was tr changing so dramatically. And they were forcing people to buy very specific kinds of armies. And it was really... It sucked. Um, in the sense that, like, you had horde rules, right? So, if you wanted to have the best army in 8th edition, um, you really wanted to try and take advantage of horde rules, which meant that you were going to have to buy so many minis. Like, you just had to flood the table, um, with a bunch of minis that you probably didn't have at the time, because in the prior edition, they had been really, really bad. Um, just like, um, uh and they also took cavalry which in the edition before that had been quite good and they made the cavalry just like absolute shit uh, they made cavalry so bad that it was extremely difficult to use them in any meaningful way which you know sucked um that was not ideal by any means of the imagination and it was this kind of this Gaines workshop approached it i think really in really really bad faith and i think people became aware that they were not approaching the game in good faith um whether they were consciously aware of it or not and that led to the game being discontinued because why would you want to support a game um that is extremely predatory towards the consumer um it was it was just bad it was like i loved eighth edition i played it a lot but i will be the first to say that the rules were poorly written it had some serious problems um but anywho um and it was also like especially if you played back then it was really frustrating like i could tell you as someone that played the game a lot then it was really frustrating like watching like 40k or like you know space marines in particular get just massive amounts of support from games workshop and basically nothing else did and then you'd have space marine players being like oh well you know they're going where the money is so like obviously we should get everything because we buy everything and it's like yeah but you buy everything because you're getting everything <laughs> like it's not you're not innately good it's just that you're the only people whose ranges they're actually supporting um so which is why i call it like a chicken in the egg type problem because it's the idea of like, oh, well, Warhammer Fantasy just wasn't, you know, 
uh, a good game, or like people didn't like it. Uh, which I remember when they when they first announced the old world was going to come back, there were there was um, not an insignificant number of people. Whoa! Uh, there was not an insignificant number of people that were like, no, they shouldn't bring back the old world because the old world wasn't popular and it didn't make money and it was a garbage game and, you know, it's just people having, like, nostalgia um, and, like, rose-tinted glasses and they remember it being better than it actually was because it was it was trash. And it's like, yeah, no, that's... <laughs> Dynamo 95 cheered. X100. It seems doubly stupid to decide to cancel WH Fantasy in the early 2010s just when they were securing the biggest possible advert for it in Total War. Yeah, but but you have to keep in mind, which a lot of people struggle with, you have to keep in mind that the the games workshop of that era, um, the, the, the games workshop that handled... Um, the end times and just like did all of that shit. That was a very, very different games workshop compared to what we have now. Um, like I'll, in my personal experience, I will happily say that that games workshop at that time was just fucking Nun underscore evil. Captain underscore um, and just awful. X100. Like Remove they were, the they were just the, the worst. Bubble. Lord is in. I was asking for a Lord rename, not a hero rename. Kind Satek, leader of chat, father of the law, highest of Texans. Remove of box. Oh, remove the Lord from the name. I okay, I see. Okay. Blue Star King. <laughs> oh wait, I've got to like. There we go. Ooh, I like how powerful these characters are starting off. Um, but we're not going to send them just yet because we don't have enough of anything. Alright. Uh, yes, give me money, demons. Uh, with Kasbar, do I think you did have more of a Kushite or Nubian vibe? I have no fucking idea, honestly. Um... I would probably run it like I would probably have it Nehakaran themed, but probably with some more like trying to explore concepts of what Nehakar was like before they be they really became one with the desert. So like, what was the deal with how they? Um, I I think the big thing I would be leaning into would be trying to explore what proto-humanity was like just after the cataclysm like you know they had had some experience with the old ones uh maybe they don't remember it but they they had some of that interaction so what was that like for them um and what kind of effects did that maybe have on them um uh, i think that would be the way i would be kind of going about it um and leading to trying to break down how you have a humanity that's stumbled out of the jungles after the gods themselves um vanquished and then building from there of exploring okay well how did they go from what we know uh how, how did they go from that to what we know now where they worship all of these desert gods and there's all this other like stuff that's involved now um what's the you know what's the story here um and that's probably what i would be exploring um I don't think I would ultimately change them that dramatically when it comes to, like, oh, how should their, uh, um, like, should they be a different theme or something like that? I would, I would probably know. Like, I wouldn't make them, like, Koreshi or anything like that. That makes sense. Ooh, the Forbidden Rod. Okay, so now I need a shitload of armaments so I can get my Kadais. Uh, 
We can almost afford Kadice. Alright. Um, we can go ahead and rush that. Ooh, I need way more slaves. Sorry, laborers. Uh, but I can recruit a Bail Taurus and all the Kadai. I want lots of Kadai. And get that going. Oh, shoot. I have convoys available, don't I? Um, okay, maybe don't do that yet. Let's send my convoy out. You will take money to there. Off you get. What units do I think the Empire will get in the DLC? Um, if they're going with Elspeth, which seems very likely, then they're probably going to go with a very strong theming around... Um, um, they're they're probably gonna go with a big theming around the uh, uh, like engineering and magic. Um, so things that they could do for the Empire roster, you have uh, the things that actually came with Elspeth in the Tarmacon book, um, which would be things like Nuln Ironsides, which would be more like heavily armored marksmen. So you, you know, basically your regular. Guys with guns, but they wear heavy armor. Uh, you could have Manon's Blades, which are like a dual-wielding sword infantry unit. Um, so, you know, swords in each hand, and they, you know, gotta, gotta fight crazy, all that stuff. Um, you could also do Hawkland Long Rifles. It's like a sniper-type awesome unit. We could get X100. the, we could get we the engineer, the, the Empire Engineer hero. They would want three weeks for build up. Trailer next week? That seems likely. A trailer next week seems likely. Um, but you could do... Um, you could do Hawkland Long Rifles as a sniper unit. Uh, I think uh, the Marienburg Landship, if I haven't said that yet. A Lamberg, the Marienburg Landship, I feel like, is an auto-include. Like, that's going to happen. Um, which will be similar to a steam tank, but distinct. Um, it, it's probably going to kind of be like a steam tank and a... It's probably going to be like a steam tank combined with a war wagon, but with a much larger base and platform. Um, oh, nice. He's on a mount now. Look at him. Um, I think you would also be likely to see the Celestial Hurricanum. Uh, the Celestial Hurricanum, uh, is, I think, is a pretty good pick, uh, which, of course, is a... Uh, um, it's, it's kind of like the Luminarch of Hish in that it's a big chariot that's got an orb of sorcery on it. But instead of having an orb of sorcery of Hish, which shoots out, you know, laser beams of light magic, it instead has an orb of uh, Azir, which is the Wind of Heavens. So it's able to, like, conjure storms and throw meteors and shoot lightning bolts. So I think maybe it could have, like, a whole bunch of bound spells and maybe some other various buffs. Um... I don't think it would have a shooting attack, per se. I, I think it would be very similar to the Wuxing War Compass, um, where it gets you like it gives you like a bunch of buffs. Um, oh, he has two Hell Cannons. That is unfortunate. Well, we should probably start moving. Oof. Oh, <laughs> my blunderbusses. My blunderbussies. Um. Oh. Alexander, thank you for the super chat. Um. What hope is there for Coadale fanboy to see him on the old world tabletop? Maybe I have too high of expectations. Uh. Hmm. I. I would say it is very reasonable to expect that eventually um Coadil will make some sort of appearance in the storyline um as far as him getting like a unique mini 
that to me does not seem super likely, but it's certainly not impossible. Um, I I would be a little surprised to see a playable Coadil anytime super soon. Um, nothing's impossible, you know. It could definitely happen, um, but it's it's certainly not something I would expect anytime soon. Fucking traitor chaos dwarfs. Oh my god, these hell cannons! Oh, I forgot my Shaggoth. Everything hurts! Or Mammoth's gonna kinda have to hard carry for a bit. World's getting a little dangerous for our caravans lately, isn't it? Okay, that's one down. Yeah, our, our general is just obliterating people, so that'll, that'll be good. No, 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 run away. And the mammoth's broken, which is not ideal. Oh, everything hurts. All right, I need you up in the air. Here, let's pull you back a bit. I need to like start sniping off certain elements of his army. Dynamo 95 cheered. X100. Did any dwarfs go further south than Correct John, or did they all head north? Uh, they they followed the mountains. Um, so because they followed like the mountains and like the the metal seams and everything that were present in the mountains, that took them only north. Um, there was nothing of interest to draw them south. Um, of course, you know, th if you want to explore the idea that maybe there were some exceptions. Uh, maybe there were some brave Dawi who who went south. That is possible. Um, I would say it is quite unlikely, um, but it could have happened. Um, but uh, I would say it is it is far more likely that all that if any went south, they were probably not super of consequence, um, and probably died very quickly. Get your asses back in here. Rally! Rally! Yeah, I think this caravan is butzed. That's okay, though. We are coming up to the end of this particular campaign. So it's not a huge deal. Our caravans are kind of falling apart. Oop, nope. And that Shadow Wizard fucking sucks. Awesome Lion Saurus cheered. X100. What other full factions could we get in TWW3 and how likely ah, would to be damn. added? Would you rate each on a 0 to 10? Yeah, whatever, it's fine. 0 meaning no chance. Total Echo win? Um, I don't know. Um, I, I would not expect another Lizardman DLC anytime soon because, if, like, Lizardman got so many Warhammer 2 DLCs. Um,. I mean, I, I think they have one. I I think they have one full size Lord Pack still in them. But um, beyond that, I, I I would say they're they're pretty much they're pretty much spent. 
Let's get this. Uh, Zar94, thank you so much for the generous super chat, my dude. Well, it's been fun, but other things demand my attention. See you all tomorrow. Hey, appreciate it, dude. Have a great day. Thank you so much for dropping by. Where is this? What is this? Oh, it's like a special battle. Okay. Well, okay then. I'm just going to run up there and grab it. I can also get, the, which which item is this? This is another minor one, right? Yeah, so this gives me the focal lens, which buffs artillery. It's pretty cool. This one, though, would give me the golden bands of Grimnir. Which gives the character wearing it some okay buffs. They're not actually, that, it's actually not that great. I think I'd much rather have the Corrupted Band. So we could get the item from Morgrim, because that's actually quite good. I wonder if I can win this now. It, it, it depends on where these dwarfs come in. Um, because it's a siege battle, so I don't need to kill them, necessarily. Alright, okay, let's try. What's the chance that we'll get in a pawn in Total War Warhammer? Uh, I would say the chance of Nippon is probably, at this point, I would probably say, like, 35 to 65 odds against. Um, if Thrones of Decay sells exceptionally well and is, like, doing really good, then odds will go up significantly. Uh, let's see. What other full factions could we get in Total War Warhammer 3 and how likely to be added when I rate each on a 0 to 10 scale? 0 meaning no chance. Um, I would say the Kingdoms of End and the Naga of Koresh, in my opinion, which granted, you can just say my opinion stupid and that's totally fine. But in my opinion, I think the chance of the Naga of Koresh and the Kingdoms of End is a, just a 10. Like, it's going to happen. It's not a matter if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when is it going to happen. Um, once again, though, you can feel free to look at that and be like, oh, Sotex lost his fucking mind, apparently. Um, and that's, you know, that's that's fair. Um, as far as, um, as far, uh, oh, these walls are open, open. Okay. Well, that makes that, and uh, now nah, I'll still go in that way. That's fine. Um, when it comes to Talea, I would, based on like, um, people finding stuff in the, the Steam DB files and yada 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 all that crap. Um, I would probably say like a pretty decent like 8 out of 10 chance that we'll get Talea. Um, and if we get Talea, I would say Estalia would then probably be hovering around like a 5 in 10 or 6 in 10 chance. And then Araby, I would pro as much as I would sell my soul to get playable Araby. <laughs> I still think Araby right now is probably around like a two in ten chance, maybe a one in ten chance, somewhere in that ballpark. Um and then Um I would probably say the fishmen are like a zero out of ten um in my heart they're a 10 out of 10 but they're probably a zero out of 10 um nippon is probably a one out of ten um i think that's about everybody right is there anybody i'm missing And you get Albion? Oh, Albion's a zero. Awesome out of 10. Line Soros cheered. X one hundred. 
Yeah, I no. wouldn't be here if I didn't respect your opinion, Smile. You are very hopeful and positive in your opinions, and I prefer that over the other approach. Oh, well, I appreciate that, Lion. I mean, granted, like, it, it could be that I'm just completely delusional. That That is a possibility, you know. <laughs> Hob oh, Hobgoblin Conate is actually an interesting one. Um, I would say the Hobgoblin Conate, hmm, that's tough. Um, hmm, I would probably say like a three out of ten, I think, for the Hobgoblin Conate. Hi, Graveguard. Ah, you love to see it. And you get. Want you to move over this way and start pew pewing people. There are cripples on them walls. Oh, this is a melee unit. Perfect. Kill them all! Kill them all! Tech 27 SS cheered. X100. What about halflings? <laughs> halflings? Oh, the humble, the humble halfling. Um, the halflings, I'd probably. I well, okay, hold on. I would say the chance for there to be halflings, like halflings, any halflings, whatsoever in the game, I would say is probably like an eight out of ten. I, I think there's a very, very high chance we will get a halfling unit of some kind. Um, now, I do not think that you're going to get a halfling faction, because that would just be ridiculous. Um, like, that would be silly. Um, and not I don't think that would be a good kind of silly. It would just be a silly silly. Um, you know, it doesn't mean it couldn't be done, but I, I would I would be, I'd be like, uh, okay. <laughs> if someone came to me and was like, halflings... Okay, we can move in our Wolf Rider archers now. These damnable dwarfs weren't here. I'd feel much better, but we'll make the best of a bad situation. Take to the walls, boys! Don't just stand there, get him. Archers! Cannon! Kill that gyrocopter. You missed. Let's get armor of contempt. Alright. We're gonna be sneaky and go around the back. Actually, mm, mm, let's be a little more smart. Okay, you're going to go there, you're going to come up here, you're going to go around the side. That'll work. Alright, we're almost through. Time restraint cheered. X100. Hey, Satek. Just hey. dived in from Oz, so sorry if you have already answered this. More layoffs are coming for creative assembly, uh, apparently. Mm. Should we be worried? Uh, should you be worried for the future of Total War Warhammer? No. Um, should you be worried for the people who are losing their jobs for, I think, not really any good reasons? Yes. Should you be worried about maybe some other projects that Total War was potentially working on, like a historical title? Probably. Um, if you care about that. Um, anything outside of, I think the Total War Warhammer set, though, like, that's their, that's their baby. That's their moneymaker. It's literally the only thing making them money right now. As long as the studio exists, Total War Warhammer is going to be just fine. Um, if it is not a Total War Warhammer project, then it may be in trouble. Oh, oh okay, yeah, nope, I don't want to be shot by Thunderers. Ow! Don't 
In! In! Take the post! Take the damn post! We're gonna wait till an opportune moment here. Oh! Fudge. Okay. I love when oh, iron breakers are coming down the hallways. That just makes me so happy. Okay, you're good to proceed. Awesome line saw us cheered. X100. Personally, couldn't care less about TWW40K, so all my hope and trust we see are tied to TW. Warhammer 3 at this point. Yeah, if, if all you care about is like the regular Total War Warhammer games, it's probably fine. Um, if you care about like anything else outside of that, I would be probably raising an eyebrow. Just because they are going to be, you know, they're going to be cutting down everywhere that they can. Okay, we have to sneak around the Iron Breakers, which is n always a little spooky. Okay, they've got this under control. You go back up that way. Cause I don't, I don't need to win. I just need to take the city. Which, in and of itself, is going to be a bitch, but you know, we'll do what we can. Oh my God! Stop the thunderers, please. Uh, you know what? Just shoot these guys. That's fine. Do I own this gate? I do own this gate. Get your ass in here. Okay, we're gonna go over this way. Y'all are tearing up the war machines. Daka 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 daka. We're gonna use this right on top of us. Oh, this is looking this is looking a little spicy. Yes, come gather around, children. Don't get seen. Don't get seen. Take the post. Take the post. Take the post. Time restraint cheers. X100. Sorry to monopolize. Would you be willing slash able to do more of your mini race pack series? Love Araby so I can't wait to see uh, which ones yes. you do moving forward. Maybe a yeah. certain collab with Andy on a custom Southlands concept. Just... Uh, I mean, if he would be interested in doing that, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I don't know if that's something he would want to do. Uh, because that would take a lot of work. Um, and I think, I think Andy tends to be very, um... Andy has a very high... How do I say this? I think Andy has a very, very high, like, like, it needs to be at least this caliber of good or else it's not worth doing um type situation which is totally fine like you know that's 100 percent valid so i think that could be a lot of fun i don't know if that's something that would really be necessarily super feasible in a reasonable time frame i guess would be my concern so possible yes would i like to do it absolutely is it gonna happen i don't know <laughs> i don't know about that More magic! More magic! Awesome line saw us cheered. X100. It's odd. I fell in love with Total War since Rome 1, but for me, once I went dragon I couldn't go back skeptical hoping for some high elf glory soon. I want unique narrative campaign goals and campaign mechanics for my pointy ear. That's fair! Ow, 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 ow! On the side, one hundred and one cheered. X one thousand. Hi, Satek. Just Take wanted to post! thank you for the great streams you and Andy do. It's brought back my passion for a hobby I left to languish for about a decade. Oh, a thank you, on the side. 
Thorgrim stream last month, especially. It was such. Uh, I really, really appreciate that so much. Uh, the Terror vs. Thorgrim stream last month was fun. Outcome. You wrote a song about it. Oh, dude, I would love to see slash hear that. If you ever want to like send that over our way, I'm sure we would love to take a look at it. That sounds like a hoot. Okay, you're gonna go this way. Oh my god! <laughs> Fucking Iron Drakes, dude. Oh, <laughs> we're getting we're getting roasted, boys. Take the post. If we can take that post and hold it, we win. Like we are we are using truly truly duplicitous hobgoblin tactics in this battle. It's not about surviving. It's about just taking the post. Cuz the dwarfs are so slow. If I can take it, all I have to do is keep them away from it, which should be fairly easy. Keep firing! Keep firing! Oh my god, the Iron Drakes, dude. No! Don't army loss! Don't army loss! Don't you fucking dare! No! We're so close! Awesome We're right there! Cheered. X100. Son of a bitch. I like hearing my username being read aloud. Okay, desperate, desperate last ploy. Just run the Hell Cannon crew. Nah, they're gonna get, they're gonna get roasted. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna get, they're gonna get absolutely roasted. <laughs> I <laughs> just incinerated. Well, okay, hold on. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take one more crack at that. I'm gonna take one last crack at that because I'm pretty sure we could do it. I just didn't do what I needed to do there at the end. Um, uh, that's super funny. Dynamo 95 cheered. X100. To quote Rogue One. Omnicide, thank you for the very sweet words, by the way. I really appreciate it. Um, oh my gosh, I need to get caught up. Awesome line source. Thank you very much for all the bits. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Time restraint. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for the bits, by the way. Yeah, definitely more mini race packs. Huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. How can crew bring unbreakable? Doesn't make sense. It's so. It, it's one of those kind of awkward situations where the the hell cannon is implemented a little weirdly to try and make it work. Awesome line um, source cheered. X one hundred. Satek was yelling so I couldn't hear my name read out aloud, so trying again. Oh, well, uh, so, I'm my apologies. I'm so sorry. I didn't <laughs> I, I didn't mean to I didn't mean to cramp on your uh, your your name stuff there. My 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 sincerest apologies. Um, the um, I totally forgot whatever it was I was about to say. Uh, whatever. I'm sure it wasn't that interesting anyway. Awesome line, Saurus cheered. X100, I forgive you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate. I pre <laughs> appreciate all the supports. Uh, I hope. I hope you're. <laughs> I hope you're being responsible with your, your your bit budget. Thank you. It's uh, it's it's, it's, it's very nice of you. Uh, I guess we could put the archers up here so they can just poop you away right at the start. Awesome line source there. cheered. Nope. X100. There. I'm not skeptical. You're not what? Oh, you're not. <laughs> well, you know, I tried. I can't I guess I can't force you to be responsible, like I can only hope. Yeah, oh, these towers are bullshit, they hurt. Really? Those doors got here so quick.
Okay, good job. Now work your way that way. Let's go! Archers, get out of the way. Archers, make yourselves useful. Need to be more aggressive with my magic usage. Okay, you are gonna go over here. What end times book is actually good? Nagash. End, end times Nagash is the. I really genuinely feel is the only re is the only good book. Um, the others were all just kind of different levels of bad, unfortunately. Um, and I don't think any of the Black Library books were particularly good. Uh, I, th I thought all the Black Library books were pretty trash um, and had like various amounts of severe errors. Because they all disagreed with each other, which was very silly. Durbas Manservant cheered. X100. Just took my mother to New Godzilla movie 8 tenths would recommend. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed the last few. Um, like, I, I'm very easy to please, to be frank. Um, I am... It, it, is, it is difficult to make something I will not enjoy. So... <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so this time we're gonna go. No, one of you will go there. The other of you will go there. We're gonna get our archers along the walls so they can see what the hell's going on. Gonna play a little smarter this time. Not a lot smarter, just a little smarter. Okay, I want you to make your way over this way. Okay, you're gonna wait down there. You are just gonna run to the back. Okay, we're gonna get Gorda's backstabber on the enemy general. Hopefully, it can hurt him. Come on, push! Armor of Contempt. Good job. Now I want you to go this way. Oh, run away. Run away. We are not fighting the hammers. That is not going to go well for us. Okay, let's... Oh, wow. You are getting the absolute shit beat out of you, huh? Oh no, stop them! Stop them! Too late. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Ow. Stick 
Oh no, you do not stop running, lads. Okay, he keeps like finding me with shit, which is annoying. All right, we finally got through the Grave Guard. I want my... Hmm, he's blocking the way. It's not super ideal. Hopefully he'll just focus more on defending than attacking. Because he's kind of got me reasonably pinned in here. Okay, you got all your upgrades now. Is a very spooky dwarf lord. This is going much worse than last time, which is kind of sad. Okay, if I can just... Ah, oh, shit, now we gotta attack him. Charge! I might be able to sneak one wolf unit past them. And try and get way over here on this post. This is going way worse than last time. Last time he didn't commit as many resources to the left flank, so... Put that over here. Oh, good. The Dwarf Lord's dying. That's good. That's going... Okay, that's going better. All right. Cool, cool. Hopefully that'll give us some more insurance against army losses. It sucks that one of my stealth units got caught out like that. Fuck, dude. He's just, like, everywhere. He's much more spread out this time. Um, and he's got good defenses in a lot of places. Uh, I guess we'll just go grab this to be annoying. Bombard these assholes with magic. Let's see if we all can come over this way. We, we probably can run through this little thing. Oh god, everything hurts. Spread out, spread out. Oh no, charge them. The archers on the walls are actually doing pretty okay for us. Did that asshole rally? Oh no, he's still- okay, he's still playing. It's like, please don't rally. Do that. Let's run over here. Drop some nonsense on them. Wolves, just go, just go. Okay, he, like, ran into that fight. Oop. Go around the hammers. So we're going to go over this way. Oh yeah, I forgot about my hell cannon. Get in here. Why is he not dead, dude? Come on. Uh, okay, we need to go... God, I think we just kind of have to go through this, unfortunately. Uh, it's going to take a while. Actually, go down this way. Let's go down this way. Okay, the Dwarf Lord is dead. We're actually making some okay progress on this little flank here. Okay, they're fleeing. Chase them. We gotta punch our way through this bullshit. Oh, 
Okay, nice. We punched through that pretty quick. Preferably before the hammers get here would be nice. Chase them. You're still fighting the good fight over there. Oh, God, I got distracted. Y'all run down over there. Archers come reinforce down here. No, don't fight. Don't fight. Don't fight fair. Fighting fair is cringe. Fighting fair is cringe. Yeah, last time the gyrocopters came like out of the settlement and we were able to isolate and blow them up. This time that is proving to be much more difficult. Take the post, take the post. And say, get debuff nerds. Actually, if y'all can come up here, we can maybe kill these. Oh, the giant contract don't want ammo anyway. So if you can claim that before they notice. Shut him down. I think he can beat them by just punching them. Maybe? Okay. Uh, you need to start moving that way. Swarm! Swarm! Okay, they're taking that. Get y'all to harass the gyrocopter. Uh, we're attracting baddies up here, which is not ideal. Okay, we need to run a... Hopefully lead them away. Don't you dare stabilize. Die. Break, damn you! Okay, now we gotta bounce. Good job. Yeah, no, I don't think. No, we got we got really lucky that first time with the um we got lucky that the gyrocopters came out the first time. I think we must have revealed ourselves too early that time. It's fine though. We're just going to not worry about it. Who's the most powerful dwarf special character? That is going to depend a lot on how you define power. Um what you think makes someone powerful. Um because depending oh nice we got a mount though so that's gonna make him a lot better um yeah it the the answer would change depending on how you define power um because that's a very nebulous term um that is quite difficult to uh you know give an easy answer to yeah i'll take the insane amounts of damage thank you very much um also can buy one of each of these okay more fucking demon flasks um 
I fucking I hate so much when you get an item and then or like when you randomize items and you just keep getting the same fucking items that you already have just over and over and over again. Ugh. So frustrating. Like I I genuinely wish that when you are like doing that stuff with items, you could like have some control over picking what the item is or like maybe what type of item it is. Um, I hate that it randomizes because it feels like it just gives you the exact same thing over and over and over and over again. It's just like, uh, I already have this. No, I will not shame my clan. I don't need more of this garbage. But hey, we actually got some pretty decent experience out of that. And because the nice thing is because this is a hobgoblin army, um, it is actually super easy to rebuild very very alarmingly quickly one might say yeah here are your 15 crowns of command yeah exactly this this guy gets it <laughs> this guy gets it um okay we could sell weapons or cash would probably be good all right uh, up here, we are beelining for that item, which will be good. Phil, thank you for the super chat. Who is my most anticipated character for Total War? Uh, for me personally, it's probably Nagash at this point. Um, Naga Nagash is going to be a insanely big deal. Um, like I feel, pr oh, Dirty Vanthor, thank you so much for the year, my dude. Holy shit. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the continued support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would say that um, there is... Um, wait, Dress with Greed? Oh, okay, I, I lost a seat. Okay, whatever, that's fine. Um, oh, Manfred's here. Great. Just because I didn't have enough problems. Uh... One, one, two, three. Awesome line, Soros cheered. X100, do you think we will get a roadmap after Todd? And what do you think the next DLC after Todd will hmm, be? Also, I... want to name a Celestial Dragon Guard unit in my game? I want to have a Satek on a Guard unit that I need to keep alive. Thematic name if possible. Ooh, sure. Call them... Call them... see a thematic celestial dragon guard unit mm, that's tough Uh Hold on, I have an I here. Der thus man servant cheered. X100. Thank Wall versus Nugash DLC, please and thank you. Dynaman95 cheered. X100. How about Guardians of the Oracle Bones? I would call them. Um. Guardian of the Oracle Bones? No, 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 no. I would call them... I, I, I want them to be something that would make sense in, in their own thing. So I would call them... Um, something along the lines of the, like, the, uh, the Coronal Guardians. 
Null and underscore Captain underscore Hammond cheered. X100. Or the Corona of Yang. Chosen of One of those two. Because a Corona is like a, it's like an astrological thing that you can see around like stars and the sun, right? And uh, Shen Yang represents, uh, like he fun functionally represents like, um, awesome line Saurus cheered. Yang represents X100. like solar How the hell do I spell concepts. That? XD. Corona, you know, kind of like the beer. Uh, C R C O R O N A. And if you want to make it like coronal, so like coronal guardians, you just add an L on the end. I should probably buff my bull centaurs since I'm going to be using quite a few of those. Uh, give me Murderous Charge and Devastating Flanker for now. Oh yeah, coronavirus. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for all the bits, by the way. Awesome line, Soros cheered. X100. Thanks. I will protect the coronal guardians with the life of all my other units in that army. Well, I feel like their job should be the be the protectors, but you know, you do you. Um. All right, here we go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go piss off Nurgle so I can finish this campaign. So if we win this quest battle, we will have the, all the stuff we need, I think, to begin the final quest battle, which will be good. So let's go punch Fester Long in the bits. Would I play Total War Warhammer Forty Thousand? Probably. Um, if especially especially when it got Tyranids, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh huh. Present. Um, Present. Also, always does go with my precious junk the other one. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, oh, name some bull centaurs. Okay, I'll do that before we wrap this up. Sorry, I just saw that. Okay, so I think we're gonna do demolition. No, we'll do we'll do death the uh, break apart rockets. It's fine. Then we can shoot the lava cannon. Just whatever the hell comes into range. We've got our angry train. Oh wait, you've also got grenades, don't you? You can go hang out with the Iron Sworn. Blunderbussies, take the flank. Well, Centaurs can hang out back here. Infernal Guard, we want y'all closer to the center. Both of our characters are flying now. That's nice. Okay, then we got the Castellan hanging over here. Open fire! Skaven are about to show up, I think. Or more Nurgle stuff, one of the two. Uh, why don't you go say hello? Oh, it's more. Oh, wait, whoa, toads. So many toads. Holy mother of toads. That is so many toads. Oh my god, it's so many toads. What can one man do against so many toads? 
stop moving. Some of our war machines fall back. Thunder buses volume will come more around this way. Throw grenades! All of you lot, come over this way. Little centaurs, get your asses over here. Scat mass scatter the nerglings. Kill the greater demon. I'm just going to keep pinging him. Wow. This, this mission actually spawns a pretty interesting amount of baddies. I dig it. Hey, Mr. Warren, thanks so much for gifting subs. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't just stand there. Go fight. You can die, good sir. All disappearing, cool, cool, cool. We good? We're good. Alrighty, very nice. Uh, Layton, good to see you. Hello. Appreciate the nice words. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, let's do healing. And we'll use it for the drill. So we've got all four of the relics we need. With the fourth relic, demon died. The great drill has the Wolverine Wolveriners? Wolveriners? Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. The mighty construct begins to thrum and quiver. I've heard that Darren and XCA employees say that Warhammer Total War would be binned on 40K's release. Personally, I don't believe. What do you think? I mean, maybe, but 40K is probably not going to come out for years still. Um, but I also don't think that's necessarily true. Um, those are going to be two different teams. Um, and like, I don't think Darren is at all aware of what CA is and isn't doing. Um, he left quite some time ago now. All right, the final battle is now available. So we'll just take a turn to heal Zatan's army, and then we'll go kick some ass, take some names. 
All that jazz. The Chaos Dwarf campaign can actually be kind of alarmingly fast if you just sort of... Like, if you just focus on the relics and don't worry about anything else, like, you can get through it pretty pretty quick, to be honest. Okay, this orb is actually going to be pretty terrible in the final battle because we're fighting dwarves who do not have a wizard, so I won't be able to actually use its effect. So we'll just take the Book of Assure so we can get more magic. Um, more maximum magic. You say that, but it's turn 92. True, but I also am, like, a very slow player. Is my counter counter point. What do I think the Chawi would think of Doug Demodone, owner of the Demsdale Demodome? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Demodone? Dimodone? I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. I'm not cultured. If the Beastmen took over Athel Lauren, would anyone be able to stop the Beastmen? Uh, if the Beastmen took over Athel Lauren, the world would have bigger problems. I genuinely believe. Um, like there, <laughs> thing things would be not good. Um, that that would literally be an apocalypse tier scenario, because the problem is that if the beastmen manage to successfully take over Athel Lauren, that would functionally mean that there would not like i i can't even express how bad that would be um because that would mean that the oak of ages would have fallen into the hands of the beastmen which they would probably immediately use their sorcery to transmute it into some horrific abomination version of what it's supposed to be um and it would be uh, yeah, it would be, uh, pretty bad. P -p -p -pre pretty bad. Uh, to say the least. Let's see, is there any, like, cool powers I can pick up for the final fight? Dreadquake battery when in my own territory. Isn't the final battle, like, right next to the drill? So it is. So that would be worth picking up. Give me that. Alright. Let's fucking do this shit. The great drill of Hashut. Hold on to your griblies. But yeah, the corruption of the Oak of Ages, that, that would just be a doomsday scenario. Like, shit would be fucked. Because <laughs> if you ruin the Oak of Ages, that would not just affect the Wood Elves. That would affect, like, all life. Like, the very cycle of life itself would be completely bonkered. The big old drill. A terrifying feat of forge craft to bore into the chaos realm. The blood of the bull god now at the fingertips of the worthiest Darwizar. Yet there are those who seek to interfere with Hashut's plan. The drill is spinning the wrong way. Well, it is drilling into the realm of chaos. Maybe to drill between realms, it has to drill that way instead of the normal way. <laughs> I 
All right. Let's mess them up. Okay. Um, oh, God. We start off with, like, absolutely zero resources. Cool. Okay. He should be able to solo. The, uh, both of these two should be able to solo quite a bit of stuff. Our army is, like, fairly low tier. Um, send a skull cracker after those guys. Let's see, I can summon reinforcements, which is good. Um, let's put some fire glaives in these entrances, and then some blunderbusses in these entrances. Especially here. If I actually build one of these... Whoa, come here. That'll give them additional range. Y'all can sit in the center to babysit anything that weird that happens. You can go over here facing like that. You're fine to aim like that. Who else doesn't have a job? Um... Uh, we're going to leave one group of Infernal Guard here just to be safe. Infernal Iron Sworn, you're going to come down here. Along with pretty much everybody else. I want y'all up at the top of the stairs. Infernal Castellan. That was very loud. Awesome line, Saurus cheered. X100. I really loved how Coke DLC continued the narrative story from the Rock campaign, and I'm very happy Katarina's end is the canon ending, because it's the only acceptable outcome if you ask me. I like short narrative too, Sockless. Yeah, I, I actually really enjoyed that they have the, the notable storylines. Um... It's it's interesting to me how the how they've kind of pivoted with the newer DLCs like Shadows of Change. Right? Whoa, okay, he completely changed his deployment. All right, all right. Well, that uh, 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 okay. He's like, look how thematic I am coming out of all these like doorways and shit, and then just haha, bitch, surprise. I, I sure was surprised. Kill them. They pulled a tricky on me. Take out those copters. Whoa, hey, hey, what's going on here? Let's get walls going. Wow, my blazing beards got evaporated. Come over this way. Give me walls up here. Fall back further. Hey, don't don't just stupidly chase them. Let's get get some things done for you. You are fighting loads of dudes. That's fine. 
Okay, Rocket's doing a good job shooting at their shit. Let's get a big boy tower over here. Hit them with a curse. Why are you not landing on the ground? Go. Full centaurs, make yourselves useful. Okay, good job. Fall back further. Let's get another wall up here. Zatan's kicking ass and taking names, which is what we love to see. Get up some more walls to try and force the AI through certain paths. Uh, turn off that. Do that. Work. Push outside. Do this. Run away. Build me... Nothing yet. Turn and shoot. Somebody shoot him! You go back there, build me one of these big towers. Advance, advance. Take out that goddamn gyrocopter. Uh, Castellan, I want you over here. Put another big boy tower here. Very lion roar there. Okay, they got that handled. Maybe just drop a little one of these on him before we pull away. Y'all get up there. Pulls that off. You're doing good. Fly your butt over here. Y'all head back inside this way. Can I summon anything fun? Uh, eh, nothing super crazy fun. Hell cannon actually would not be bad. I am fine with a hell cannon. Uh, where is my Skullcracker? He's apparently... Whoa, okay, he's fighting, like, everything in the universe. All right. Satan, get your ass over here. You fall back inside. Let it rain, baby. You'll love to see it. All right, get the hell out of there. Why are we just standing here? Let's go, guys. Sorcerer, come here. Get rid of the flying units. Their existence distresses me. So much shit over here. Choo choo, bitch. Excuse me. More towers, more towers. Infinite towers. This is just wave one. Oh, 
Oh, those are grenades. Uh, where are my blunderbusses? There. Get rid of them! Zatan, you just dive right in there and start messing shit up. Team. Okay, I think we've secured the south flank. Do that. Almost got all the walls up I want. Okay, Zatan is in the fray. As is the Skullcracker. Alright, we should probably refresh some of our units. So let's recall them. Okay, we've got some Infernal Guard up here now, so that's good. Let's block off one of these paths. Yeah, get fucked. Alright, let's build up... Uh, let's actually build up one of these outer towers. That way we have a little bit better long-range harass. Okay, let's also send back... Oh, a Skullcracker died. Okay, hmm, interesting. Alright, let's also send you back. Pull y'all back to my little citadel here. We're gonna close off... The... Uh, neither. We're gonna build this tower is what we're gonna do. Alright, wave one is dead. On to wave two. Fall back! Random question, could you see us getting a Centigor Lord? No, uh, a generic one? No, there's a... Oh yeah, there's chaos shit. There's a chance we might get, um... <laughs> I, for I totally forgot about the demons. Um, there's a chance we might get uh, a Centigor generic hero at some point, because the old world has introduced that as a concept where the Centigore Chieftains can be a hero choice, which is really cool. Um, that's that's very exciting. Um, so that is certainly possible. Um, though uh, what all that would specifically look like is kind of hard to say at this point. Um, but like, you know, I'd be down for a Centigore generic character. Though, uh, obviously, the first thing I want is a Centigore... Um, Legendary Lord in the guise of uh, Goros Warhoof, but one bit at a time. Yeah, anything that flies needs to die like immediately. Okay, can I get back one of my like more elite units? Yes, I can. Okay, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to close off this path and we're going to put a slowdown thingy over there in a minute. Shoot them, please. Stop them. Okay, I need to... Oh, that's not good. They're blowing up my towers. You can't rebuild those now. You go deal with that. Key. 
This map is so big, it takes her fucking ever to get anywhere. Oh no, you can't rebuild on this map. Oh, thank God. But that's gonna get brutal really fucking quick if I can't. All right, let's move up. Okay, so the tans out there kicking ass, taking names. Just stand there, fucking do something. Let's summon. Okay, y'all need to close up that gap. Okay, don't stand there. They're not coming that way. They're not coming this way either. Let's go. Okay, my sorcerer's got that under control. I need him to come get this under control. Oh boy! They're just fucking everywhere. Rebuild that bitch. Let's give Zatan improved armor. Start throwing spells. And of course I get fucking love tapped by an annoying ass unit. Oh god, we lost a post. This battle is actually a lot more entertaining and difficult, uh, but it's actually pretty fun with, like, not a super high tier army. Cause like you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants. Hey, Mercy, what's up, dude? Wait, is that? Thanks so much for the raid. How you doing, dude? We are we are fighting the the final battle in a Chaos Dwarf Rums of Chaos very hard campaign. Um, and we kind of jumped into it at a fairly early point, so our army isn't actually that good. Which means this battle is proving to be surprisingly sticky. Which is making it quite fun. Uh, let's get my gold chevron skullcracker out here to just start plowing through demons. Put our fire resistance to work over there. Uh, let's see. We probably have some units we could try unsummoning. But, yeah. How are y'all doing? What were y'all playing? I assume y'all are probably playing Total War, but uh, what, what kind of campaign were y'all doing? So we can pull that back. Oh, that space is down. Let's get more boys out here. Ooh, a trick quick mortar would make me very happy. The centaurs and chaos force. Okay, 
Let's give me some hobgoblins on wolves. Go help him out. Sotek, how can fans send you gifts that are not money? Do you mean like physical items? Is that what you're asking about? Okay, those those uh, flamers, they get the, those those gotta go. Chaos gifts. I, I mean, I already have plenty of mutations, to be honest. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think I need any more of those. Okay, you. Let's recall. You can also be recalled. Okay. Uh, you also can be recalled. Reclaim the post! Reclaim the post! You hold your fire. Okay, we're pretty secure up here now. I think Thorgrim's the next thing. <clears throat> Make sure Zatan is nice and beefy. GIFs. <laughs> we're just gonna get more. We're just gonna get more bodies out here. Here he comes! Magic contained, the blood of Hashut flows forth. But there is one final challenge to this unlimited power. The Grudge Bearer and his cronies approach. There, there they are! The traitors! Thoric Felagar Thorgrim. That have fled the love of our ancestors. We stop this abomination that burrows into the rock. A machine powered by remnants of our gods. Such desecration needs to be answered in time. I will tear out every page of the Devil's Crown. Null no, underscore Captain underscore Hammond cheered. X100. Gifts not gifts, you heathen. Nope, gifts. I don't care. Summer balls, I don't care. Drang them all! I'm so glad they got him to come back for this. Like, they, they didn't have to pull back Thorgrim's voice actor. They could have just had, like, Peasant! Chaos World characters talking. Peasant! But I'm so glad they did, because it adds, like, so much fun and flavor. Attack them! Into them! Oh yeah, there's ogres. Make sure we've got good towers defending those. Come here, Thorgrim. More soldiers! I demand more soldiers! Alright. They've got fire weakness, so this should just delete them from the face of the earth. Oh, baby. Keep it coming. Oh, 
Oh, it's just a regular Master Rune Lord. Oh, no, no, it is Thorin. Okay. I guess they're just like, well, he is a Master Rune Lord. Ah, fucking ogres, dude. Why don't you stand there and go kill them? Hey, Sadie girl, what are you doing? You being a good girl? You being a, what are you doing, silly girl? <gasps> silly girl, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, come here. Come here, come, come here. Up. <laughs> what are you doing, silly dog? What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? Sorry, the puppy's here. <laughs> Uh, Mantis Man, if there's something specific you're wanting to, like, ask about sending, just, like, send me a DM or something, and I'll, we can figure that out. Just stand there and charge! You lot, go do with that shit. Okay, it looks like we need some more reinforcements back here. But I know just the guys. He donated five dollars. Hey, Sitek, do you think we'll see any more Dread Fleet characters in Warhammer 3? Since so many people are predicting Sea Lord Ashley and maybe Prince William will work as an LH for a more simple DLC. Hmm, that's. Uh, that's not impossible, certainly. Okay, I need Thorgrim to hurry up and die. This last little bit of his health is proving, uh, rather tenacious. I've got ogres crawling up my ass. You go there, you go there. Y'all just keep bombarding them. You lot shoot that thing. We've almost cleared off the upper platform, which is good. Uh, let's see. Summon something to kill the Iron Blaster. Great, now there's a fucking giant ass bullshit thing involved. Okay, the dwarfs, the dwarfs are defeated. So now we just have to deal with the Slaughtermaster. Who's out here, I saw him a minute ago, where'd he go? Okay, yeah, the dwarves, the dwarves are dealt with. Yo, Lore Master of Sitekwidida, what if you were trapped in Warhammer Fantasy the end time arrived in a desperate attempt to survive? We were able to open a magic gate to another world. We assembled an army and held the line against chaos till the portal. Whoa! Whoa, hold up. <laughs> hold up, give me a second. Hold on. <laughs> let me let me stabilize all this shit, and then I'll <laughs> I'll get around to that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is this? Where's the Slaughtermaster? Okay, all this is defeated. Y'all can head back to the center. There he is. 
Satan, kill him! It ends here! Uh, Dreadquake Mortars. I only have one. There it is. Victory! Uh, let's see. Physical items. Not money. I'm not asking you to review your personal address. So I'd love to be able to send you an anti-physical items in relation to your respective channels. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Mantis Man. Yeah, send me uh, send me a DM on uh, Discord. And we, we, will, we can get that figured out. No problem. Woo! Well, that was a fight. <laughs> Would it be possible for the drill of hatchet to harm or kill the great maw because of his ability to drill through reality? I, I, I think it could certainly harm the great maw. Kill it? Maybe? Uh, definitely harm it. Like, yeah. I'm done. Hey, we got the achievement. Nice. There we go. Once more, the dwarves of the West prove how weak they truly are. Now, Shush! I want to enjoy this. Dead upon the field. That scene makes me so sad. Thorgrim just lying dead on the battlefield. The blood of her shoot gushes from ancient reservoirs, filling great halls with liquid power. Sorcery once thought impossible can now be cast. Spells to shatter mountains. Zatan has served the will of the great bull god and brought strength to his master, Gorth the Cruel. With the blood of her shoot secured, the general foresees a greater harvest of sacrifices, ready to be cast into the fires of Zar Nagrund. All right, another achievement ticked off. Hell yeah. Cool, so we got Chaos Wars done with. Um, that was actually much faster than the other ones. Um, so that was nice. Uh, we literally did that in two streams. <laughs> so um, I could end the stream here, but I think instead, um, if y'all are cool with it, why don't we just kind of hang out and chat for a bit? Y'all just want to like chat about lore and crap. Oh God, I'm dead. Ah, God, I'm dying. Ah, uh, let's see. There I am. Uh, figure we could just hang out for a bit. Um, let me get, okay. Okay. Let me get caught up on all these messages now. Um, and we can just chill. Look, I'll even, I'll even put, I think that's, I don't, I don't know if that's wait. There we go. That's the one I want. There, now y'all can see yourselves up there. Um, so, um, let me get caught up on questions. What message? So, um, so yeah, Mantis Man, please send me a message on Discord uh, or Twitter, either one, um, and we we will we will get that worked out. Cause I yeah, I'd love I'd love to get some. Um, uh, healthier the mad. What message? So we did our. What if you were trapped in warm fancy the end times of desperate attempts to survive? We opened Dynamo a magic 95 gate. Ninety-five cheered. X one hundred. The Chaos Dwarfs found the blood of Hashat in the ground and decided that the Darklands needed some freedom. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally not America. Yep. Um, okay, there's a couple things I need to get caught up on here. Um, Desperate attempts to survive, we were able to open a magic gate to another world where we assembled an army and held the line against Chaos. The portal opened only to make it through. The last thing we saw of the portal was a squaring off skin demon Prince of Corn. Starting another one soon. Oh, that's awesome, Hellfear. It sounds like y'all had fun, which is the important thing. That's great. Um, Tiski, hey, Sotek, do you think we'll see any more Dreadfleet characters in Warhammer 3 since so many people are predicting Sea Lord Island? Perhaps we could get Prince Aurelian as a legendary hero for a more sea themed DLC. I think that is very possible. Um, I think that's super possible. Um, yeah, because to my understanding, the deal with the Dreadfleet characters was that if i recall correctly it was that creative assembly was told they could only use a certain amount of them as legendary lords for the vampire coast because if they use too many of them then it would just be like a 
it, it would just be like a um a dreadfully dlc uh, and they were like no uh so they the um uh, that being said i don't think they would be restricted from using maybe some legendary heroes uh, but maybe I don't. I don't know. I know there is some kind of weird situation with like how much of Dreadfleet they were allowed to use. So I don't know if Games Workshop would be like, oh no no, we don't want you to use anything else from Dreadfleet, or what the deal would be there. Uh, Vorn, thank you for another gift sub, dude. My lord, uh, appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Um, but uh, yeah, Prince Aurelian, I think is a, would make for a really cool legendary hero because he has a very unique design. Um, that being said. I do want Core Hill first. Awesome line, Sora's um, shield. X100. But, um, Can you try to convince CA to make units that are actual vampires, depth guards, blood knights, uh, more elite, no promises. Entities, more power per entity, please? And another question, if you don't mind. Thoughts on roadmap? Thoughts on roadmap slash next DLC after Thrones of Decay? Much love from Norway. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um uh so i i i think it's after what they did to grail knights i think it's pretty likely um that they would want to do something like that uh to make vampire units more elite um i i i think that is certainly not impossible um i can't promise that that'll happen uh but i know that's something that's been asked about around the community and at the end of the day um if y'all are can here i'm gonna take my headphones off um if y'all are consistently asking for something as a community um they usually are pretty good about trying to listen to what the community wants and try and find ways to implement it into the game uh but yeah i, I think that's certainly something that can be done uh, as far as what i think is going to happen after thrones of decay i don't know um i think that's honestly going to depend very heavily on how well thrones of decay sells um, if I recall correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think we're at 96 Legendary Lords right now. Um, or no. <coughs> I think it's, hmm, someone, someone figure out how many we have. Cause that'll, that'll, cause I, I, I think they want to do something fun for the 100th Legendary Lord, um, which might be kind of like a separate thing. Um, but, uh. So Thrones of Decay is going to come with four new characters because it's the free LC Legendary Lord. Okay, it's going to be 96 after Thrones of Decay. Okay, so in that case, um, yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. Um, I think there's a very good chance that the Slanesh DLC might get pushed back and they might do something different um, or they might do a different kind of DLC. For me, it's going to depend on what Thrones of Decay looks like and how well... Because they're going to be working on whatever's next before they know how well Thrones of Decay is going to do. Um, but I, I think Nagash is going to be the 100th Legendary Lord. Um, he feels like a really strong contender um, for the 100th. But um, if they... I mean, if they do Slanesh, then, you know, it'll be Slanesh plus a bonus character. Um which I, a part of me feels like they might, the way they do their DLCs, they might end up having 100 characters and be like, all right, the free LC character that comes with Slanesh isn't technically the 100th character, it's the 101st character. And the 100th character is going to come out like immediately afterwards or something like that. Um, I don't know how exactly they're going to play that because, um, granted, we we don't know, I think, how much they want to make a big deal out of the 100th character. You know, they kind of put out that blog post, which was like, a year ago two years ago now it was like ages ago now i think it was a year ago um where they were like oh yeah we kind of want to do something special for the 100th character but that was before the shadows of change controversy that was before the first round of layoffs because of the hyena cancellation and before the first the set of layoffs we just had on friday so, or on thursday so <laughs> you know it's kind of like uh i don't know how many of their plans may have had to shift um but um so i i i would say that all bets are kind of off at the moment but we'll we'll see what happens we'll see what happens um i should turn on some little background music shouldn't i um as far as um uh so yeah yeah uh let's see uh hammond 
Uh, oh, Hammond, you're also in that group? Or are you just adding in a joke on top of that? <laughs> One, because America fuck you out. Yeah, mm -hmm, sure. Um, Mithril Blade. Hey, Sotek, glad to finally catch the live stream. So I was wondering about the various Beastman characters would view the Pyramids of Kimri. Are they sufficiently defiled or worth attacking? Uh, the Beastmen would, they would want to tear down the Pyramids of Kimri because they are representations of civilization. They are things that were constructed by humans, um, especially, but they were things that were specifically constructed by people of some civilization or race in order to basically, you know, further the concept of civilization. Um, under no circumstances, um, uh, would they be at all okay with allowing the pyramids to stand? The only reason they would do that, um, would be if they, uh, the only way they would tolerate it is just because, frankly, the, um, you know, the desert is just too inhospitable and they don't go down there. But if the Beastmen are, like, attacking everywhere, and they eventually go down to Nehakara, they would want to rip down the pyramids. How do Beastmen reconcile with Chaos building their own crap? The Beastmen do not care who you're aligned with. If you are building stuff, they are going to want to tear you down. Um, like, it is... Um, just because you're, like, the Warriors of Chaos, and you build a Chaos Citadel does not mean the beastmen are not going to want to rip it down. They will. <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev tore down Cetra's Pyramid? Oh, the heresy. Uh, Kastrata, thank you so much for gifting a sub. Appreciate that. Uh, if y'all got gifted a sub today, because there were quite a few, make sure you please thank the person uh, who did that. Uh, <clears throat> um... Do you think the Cathay Summon Ancestor ability are like the prototype Stormcast? Um, there is a similarity there, but the the Summon Ancestors are not really like the Stormcast. Uh, you have to keep in mind that um, you have to keep in mind that Stormcast Stormcast Eternals are humans that well mo for the, from what we've seen humans that have been elevated by having a small piece of sigmar so like a god put in them and so they're basically risen up um to you know almost kind of demigods um the only thing that the summon ancestors uh summon ancestral warriors uh, ability has in common with stormcast is their ability to appear very suddenly um, on battlefields. Uh, Ronald Czar Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> Reagan would have been a Chaos Dwarf. That that I would probably agree with. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, I, I would say the similarities there are quite fleeting. Um... Check further up for your idea about the Demons of Chaos tech tree. Um, I think they could try making demon characters be available as mono god or full demons. Likewise, Mark Mortals work in a similar way. I mean, yeah, I, I've, I have sent Creative Assembly a giant, giant Google Doc that has all of my recommended changes for all the campaigns. And the Demon of Chaos page is like, her, it's so big. It's so long. Uh, there's so many recommended changes on it. Um, and I'm just praying that any of them get implemented. But it would require work. And Creative Assembly likes to pretend that the Demons of Chaos don't exist. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, I, I don't know if I'll ever win that fight. Um... Especially because, unfortunately, a lot of people in the community lack the vision to understand that I'm right about the Demons of Chaos and how it should be fixed. So. <clears throat> uh, 
Because until Bellacor gets moved into that faction, nothing else matters. Uh, Bellacor joining the Demons of Chaos would be like the first major step to fixing it. Um, but man, it would be a big step. Um... You need to challenge Andy Hall to a duel to the death. Somehow, I don't think he would accept. Um, plus, I don't want to kill Andy Hall. Then, like, who else is going to write? <laughs> Who's going to write their shit? Uh, do you think we're going to get any major reworks in Thrones of Decay? Yes, probably. Um, there will probably be a substantial amount of legacy changes, which legacy changes are basically reworks. Uh, it's the end. My Cubicle 7 recommended list from last stream arrived. Pouring over the Lustria book. Also got Sea of Claws and Winds of Magic. Awesome! I hope you're enjoying it. It's the end. Let me know what you think. Um, there are, there are parts of the books that I don't like, but most of it I think is really good. And even the parts that I don't like, it doesn't require that many edits to make it something I'm okay with. How would Malagor hate the Admech, the Dark Mechanics, and Vashtor? I mean, they're machines. They're literally like pieces of technology made manifest or like constructs of civilization the beastmen would be like fuck that shit rip it apart shit all over it quite literally do i sometimes rewatch the total war armor trailers yes i do that all the time <laughs> i do that all the time all the time uh what do i think the chances of va jade vampires getting into total war warhammer are okay like i i'd probably put it at a 50 50 um i i if the jade vampires get rolled into the vampire coast i think there's a pretty good chance you would see them um i do not think there's any chance of them appearing in the vampire counts um i think like for the vampire counts the best they would do is like a reference but i don't think they would actually add any new models into the game but if they did it for the vampire coast I think there's actually a pretty good chance you would see new models. Because that would be like an actual expansion to the race. What would happen to the warm world? Everyone said, fuck it and join chaos. Uh, the planet would be consumed by the realm of chaos because that is what the dark gods would ultimately want. So it would still go boom. Like the end times would literally just happen. Uh, Phil 5991. There is, so the jade blooded vampires is, I, I it's kind of an unofficial term. Um, uh, I, I believe it is a term that is used for them somewhere. But it's, it's more of a community term at this point. Um, if we were to actually see the bloodline of uh, Harakte, it would have a it would have a unique name. You know, like Von Karstein, Blood Dragon. They would not be called Jade Blooded, right? They would be called something else. Um, they would have a name. But as of right now, they do not have an official name. How did I meet Andy Law and then decide to work together on stuff? Um, I made a, a lore video. Um, unfortunately, the it, it was it was the first in the Constellation series. So I made a lore video about the solar system of Warhammer Fantasy, which those videos are not very popular. People don't seem to care for them very much. But I also I, I kind of want to take them down and do another whack at it because I think maybe if I make it one big video that's like over an hour long, it just covers like all sorts of different astrological and astronomical concepts as one video maybe that would make it a little more palatable um but most people don't seem to care for it very much but anyway uh, when i made that video um it did okay like the solar system one was fun um and um as part of it um uh, there was a portion that i think got a lot of people's attention because it was a direct quote from an in-universe character um one of the high elves um, I think it was the lore master Eurelian and, uh, it, it was talking about, you know, the, 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 the planets. And so, um, we, I called one of my voice actor buddies 
to come and voice act that part and he did and he did a wonderful job which made that part of the video even cooler um so there was like this whole voice acted section and somebody watched the video and was like oh wow that's super cool and they knew that andy law and knew that andy law had written that part so they sent it on twitter to andy law to be like hey look like this thing you wrote showed up in a lore video and it got voice acted and everything and he was like oh that's super cool and they added me in the message so like we noticed each other and at that point i was already kind of doing my thing where lore beards was just me um nathan had already fucked off and so i um so i was just looking for people to come on and chat with me about just stuff um you know so like i you know i chatted with like david geimer and uh i talked to andy uh andy hall uh, and I talked to a bunch of like the people that created like cubicle seven stuff. Um, and so I messaged, so I, because I was kind of already in that mindset, um, <clears throat> I messaged, um, Andy law and I was like, Hey, do you want to like do something together? And he was like, sure. So we had a stream and we had a shit ton of fun. It was super enjoyable. And then at that point I started watching Lawhammer. Um, which is his Warhammer Fantasy roleplay game and was like mesmerized by how fucking amazing it was. Um, and the Rookery streams, which are the streams that basically the Lawhammer, half of the Lawhammer crew does because they run a company called Rookery Publications that Andy also runs. And it was super awesome. And um, I talked with them and was like, hey, I would love if y'all would come on to Lorebeards and talk to me about some other stuff. So... Andy Lease came on, and then Lindsay Law came on, who's Andy's wife, and then Andy came on again. And when we were doing it with Andy for the second time, I was it, basically the conversation was kind of something along the lines of like, "This is super fun. We should do this more often." I was like, "Well, how would you like to just keep coming on until we get sick of each other?" And he was like, "Sure." And then we never got sick of each other, <laughs> and, and now we've been having more and more talks about trying to make Lorebeards into something bigger and better um which i would love um but obviously there are there are difficulties in that because there there's all sorts of like there's all sorts of things we have to figure out um but i'm i'm very excited for the future and uh getting to meet andy law was definitely the most important thing that happened to me in 2023 uh bar none probably the most important thing that's happened to me in like the last five years to be frank um we want who would win back who would win will return but it will be very different um because i was not thrilled with how it was like it was fun but it didn't feel substantive like it, it didn't feel nutritional right it was just kind of garbage it was funny garbage but it was garbage um so i so we've been hashing it out behind the scenes of how to remake who would win into something that's not only entertaining, but also fills your belly with good stuff. Cause like the, the Malekith versus Cetra one was a banger. And then Tyrion versus Thorgrim was fun, but Tehenuin versus Skrulk was kind of eh. Like it was, it, we had a good time, but it, it didn't, I, it didn't feel right, I guess. And I, I think it's because the format just didn't work. Um, but that's why we've been uh, brainstorming. Godzilla 2021, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you so much for helping me keep food on the table and all that jazz it means the world to me. Uh, you and Andy should do a total, total war Warhammer trailer stream, giving your quick thoughts on each trailer. That could be super fun. Um, something that I have been bugging him about that I don't know if it's going to be possible, but I think it will, is us doing some bonus content every Wednesday. Um, so like those kind of really late streams on Wednesday nights, um, we might use those as just bonus streams. So like one week, it might be a who would win. Another week, it might be us reacting to, like, a lot of the classic Total War Warhammer trailers. Another week, it might be us playing a board game. Um, uh, go buy Dark Deeds. <laughs> Which, if you haven't, make sure you check out Dark Deeds uh, by Andy Law and his crew, the Rookery. They, they published a game. 
It's a board game. I pre-ordered it. You should all go pre-order it. Uh, but you know, something something like that could be fun. Something like something like that could be could be good. Could we do a tier list? Oh yeah, we could absolutely do a tier list video. That could be fun. A tier list video would be super fun because me and Andy would argue like a motherfucker on how to where to place characters. A tier list could be very very fun. I'm actually gonna write that down. Um, that's that's <laughs> that's a really funny idea. Actually, so if we did like if we did like tier lists, um, reaction content. Um, um, constructive feedback on fan content, uh, <laughs> smash your pass. I don't know if Andy could do, <coughs> I don't, I don't know to what level Andy's brain rot on the internet is like, I can do smash your pass. Um, cause I just don't give a fuck. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if his, uh, dignity has been torn down quite that much. Um, but we could do tier lists, reaction content, constructive feedback, who would wins. Um, jacuzzi stream. That means either he would have to come to Texas or I would have to go to Edinburgh. Personally, I would rather go to Edinburgh, but that's expensive. Lord Master Sotek, any idea when we'll get a new Lord on Hippogriff model for the old world? I have no fucking idea, Champion of the Grail. Um, Games Workshop, as far as I'm concerned, Games Workshop has super dropped the ball when it comes to models for the old world. It's embarrassing, in my opinion. Um, I, uh, I, I hate how little support the old world has. Um, it, it's driving me crazy, to be honest. Um, like I, I'm intending on making a beastman army for the old world. I am not going to buy any GW models for it though. Um, other than maybe like maybe some character models. I think for the most part though, I'm only going to do like, um, I, I'm, I'm going to 3d print the minis I want because I just don't like the way I just don't like the old beastman minis. Um, and I want the new Benny beastman minis. Have I watched murder drones? I have not. Um, it's vaguely on my to-do list. Um, because I really enjoy animations, um, and I like Michael Kovac as a voice actor, so I'll probably like it, so I'll get around to watching it. I, I think my brain kind of put it into one of those places where I decided I was going to wait until it's done, and, like, once it's done, I'll watch it. Any fun lore about the vaults? Yeah, so the vaults, um... The vaults, which is the really, really big mountain range that separates Bretonia from Talea, is kind of what it's most famous for. Um, uh, it is a very nasty mountain range that's virtually impossible to cross o over, like going up. There are virtually no passes through it. So in order to get across the vaults, what you normally have to do is you have to go under it. Um, you have to go into the depths, into the underway, and make your way across the vaults that way, and then come up. Um, which makes it incredibly dangerous. Because, the uh, obviously, the depths are infested with all sorts of horrible, nightmarish garbage. Um, you know, limited, or uh, including, but not limited to, Skaven, Night Goblins, Trolls, uh uh beasties of various nature and all sorts of horrible unspeakable things um if you actually read the bruner the bounty hunter series which has like a whole omnibus and tons of little stories um several of bruner's stories talk about the vaults and how to get across them um and it's it's like you really don't want to do it unless you know exactly what you're fucking doing it's very dangerous <clears throat> Updates on the Queek video. Uh, it is coming along very, very well. Um, the the first uh, about 40-ish minutes of it are extremely close to being um, just like full-on finish. Like done, 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 done. 
Uh, basically, we're at the point now where we are hashing through, like, um, the background art being animated. What should the music be? Should there be any ambience noise? And if there is ambience noise, what should it be? And once we know what it is, how much of it should it be so it's not intrusive? Um, I am fin I have a part of the script that's going to go off to a different kind of creator because there's something special that has to be done with it, but that's not a huge deal because that's later. Um, part one, it's it's coming along well. Um, I am irritated that I definitely am not going to have it out by the end of March, but it should not be long into April before it's done. Um, and it's going to be exactly like uh Belagars in that we're going to release part one first and part one is going to be um history the like the history of quick head ticker which is the longest portion by far and then part two is i think skills and equipment and like notable items and things that are associated with him and then part three is the famous battle segment and then um the end times uh and then after that we'll release no, them no, all combined captain, together as like a big movie cheered. after like a few X100. weeks 100 context for the law redeem i sent through dm uh what lore context of lore redeem oh Okay, I'll, I'll look at that later. I'm not going to look at it right now. Uh, I'll look at that later, though. Um, Dino Man, if the Beastmen hate civilization, why do they use metal weapons and armor? I know they steal it, but wouldn't it be a sign of civilization? Why don't they use stone weapons like the Savage Orcs? Because the Beastmen are... They are not as like, oh, we shouldn't be hypocrites. Like, we should only follow a very... Like, they're going to use the most brutal means that they can acquire and figure out how to use in order to sow death and destruction as they possibly can. They don't give a shit that it's hypocritical. Because you, you could definitely argue that they're hypocrites for using metal and wearing armor and building and like making chariots um, and like doing all that shit. Like you could definitely argue that, oh, well, from a standpoint, that's obviously like, how dare they? they don't give a fuck um they're not the ones making it so as far as they're concerned it's just it's just stuff to be had um you know it is it is shit they steal from other people uh like sometimes they do make their own weapons and armor but it's very crude um because it's like cold forged um so like you know it's literally just like sheets of metal or whatever it is they're using that they just roughly beat into shape so that they fit into it um, but, um, yeah, plus trophy taking is a very important part of beastman culture. So the concept of defeating an enemy and taking a trophy to mark your victory is huge for beastmen. Um, so a lot of it is also that they take things from the people they kill to show what they've done and incorporate it into themselves, whether that's taking a bunch of different bits of people's armor and, you know, kind of crudely forcing it around their body so that they end up wearing some armor or taking somebody's weapon. And like, it's also worth noting, they very rarely will keep it as they found it. They will usually defile it in some notable fashion um, they also, you know, don't take care of it, so it rusts and chips and decays and rots if it can, um, which they don't give a shit about. Um, if anything, it just makes it more effective in kind of a horrific sense. Thanks for all the bits, guys, by the way. Which would be more bottom tier, Krimlo, Gelt, or the Pygmies? Uh, Pygmies would be at the absolute, like, you know the meme from Family Guy where he's, like, talking to, he's talking to God and he's like, where does, where does so-so go? Um, the, the, the concept of the pygmies is straight to hell. Like the boiler room of hell, like the worst fucking spot we can find <laughs> the absolute bottom of bottom tier is the fucking pygmies. They should never be brought up ever again. Like those are one of those, it's, it's just so, I just don't see a way to redeem it. That's one of those things where like, 
there are things you can salvage, but the pygmies is just awful. Like, just bury it. And just, just be like, you know what? We're just going to say that doesn't exist. Because it was just that bad. Do you think Creative Assembly will do an end times trailer for when they drop support for the game to Warhammer 40k? Well, I would say that it is by no means a guarantee that they're going to stop doing Total War Warhammer when they start doing Warhammer 40k. Uh, because from what I understand, I'm pretty fucking sure they're already working on 40k. Um, and even when it comes out, I don't think that's necessarily going to be handled by the same team. It's probably going to be a different team. Um... Uh, so there's a very good, I mean, as long as Total War Warhammer keeps making money and there's stuff they want to do, they'll keep adding to it, to be honest. So I think there's a pretty good chance you might see Total War Warhammer and Total War Warhammer 40,000 exist in the same space. Though, more than likely, by that point, Total War Warhammer will be wrapping up. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll be coming to its natural conclusion. Um, that being said, um... Will they do an end times trailer to do a send off for Total War Warhammer? I doubt it. Um, I would love it if they did. I you know, like I would honestly love if they made like a big final cinematic trailer, kind of like Immortal Empires, the Immortal Empires trailer, like just a big narrative trailer that's a final send off to the game and like thank everyone for supporting it. That just shows off like a bunch of thematic showdowns across the world with all the new races and new characters and all that other shit they've added. Cause no matter, no matter how you feel about it, like no matter what total war Warhammer is the ultimate celebration of Warhammer fantasy that will probably ever exist. Um, I, I don't see how it could possibly be topped, uh, at least not for so long. Um, like the, um, even the old world, is going to take years upon years upon years to get anywhere close to Total War Warhammer's level of celebrating Warhammer fantasy. And that's if Games Workshop actually gets off their ass and starts properly supporting the game. Like, I don't think there will ever be anything like it ever again for, for Warhammer fantasy. Like, this is, this is the peak of the setting. Um, that being said, I think maybe there will be some cool new directions we go in, but you know, our Mount Everest will always, always be total war. I would be happy to be wrong though. Like that, I would be so glad if I was wrong. If I could start my life again in the Warhammer world and do whatever I want, would I do it? Probably not. The Warhammer world kind of sucks. <laughs> um, it's kind of a horrific, nightmarish place. Um, yeah, no, probably not. <laughs> Dynamo 95 cheered. X100. They'd only do an end times trailer if it was also a secret Age of Sigma Total War trailer. <laughs> I don't think that's necessarily true. I, I think there's a reasonable chance that if, if they got to the point where they said, you know what, we've done everything we want to do. It's time to say goodbye and move on to other things. I think there's actually a pretty good chance. They might do a send off. Um, normally they don't, you know, their games just kind of drift off into obscurity. Um, but I wouldn't put it past them with total war Warhammer. It's, it's been kind of a unique experience for CA. What's the safest place in the Warhammer world? Hmm. Hmm. If you're a human with a human lifespan and you could go anywhere and you would be accepted and protected by the community that lived there, probably Ulthuan. Like probably one of the inner inner kingdoms of Ulthuan. Um Everywhere else would come with some pretty notable problems. And even in Ulthuan, you would need to come at a very specific time 
and you would need to be a human so that you could only live a human lifespan and then die. <laughs> like, you would need to be dead within 100 years. Um, Because, like, no matter where you go, there are going to be threats. If I had to put my money on it, how long do you think Total War Warhammer has left before the send-off? Uh, I'd probably say, like, I think Total War Warhammer probably has a good five to seven years left. Like, a healthy five plus years. Um, I would say eight would shock me. I'd be happy, you know, I'd be pleasantly surprised, but I, I think... Because, like, what? We're on year... What are we, on year seven at this point? Right? Um, so I, I could see like maybe another five, um, unless something crazy happens. Um, the only way I could see them doing more than that, when I say crazy, I mean crazy to such an extent that like, if CA, if, if like what's going on at CA led to them leaning so heavily into Total War Warhammer that Sega of Sega of Europe came to them and said like hey guys you're going to get <laughs> you're going to make Total War Warhammer games now and you're not going to make historical games anymore because we can't fucking sell those and we need money so you're no longer a historical strategy game company you are only a fantasy and sci-fi strategy game company um, then maybe I could see Warhammer going for even longer because that would be like all they do, but that would be like a bizarre future. That would, that would be bizarro world. Um, it, if they're going to keep doing what they normally do, then yeah, I could see maybe another five years. Have I seen the legends of total war video? Uh, I don't really care what legend has to say on that particular matter. I'll be honest. Um, like, you know, legend is uh, someone that is dealing in rumors and the rumors of rumors. Um, and uh, like, you know, he, he, he left behind any of his firsthand sources. So everything he's going to be getting is going to be from back alley shady nonsense, which is not going to be accurate. Like, if it's something that's going to be happening very, very soon, then it'll probably be accurate because it's just someone, like, frankly leaking info, I guess. But, uh, like, trying to predict future plans, like, oh, how many DLCs does Warhammer have left? Yeah, fuck that. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, as, as someone that has been intimately involved with CA for a long fucking time now, um, like, I can tell y'all that their plans change so fucking often that it, it's impossible to predict what they're going to do like you you absolutely never know when they're going to pivot and something's going to change dramatically um so anyone that's like oh there's this much left before they're done like that's the dumbest shit like don't listen to that it's stupid Try, trying to predict the future with video game companies or games workshop even is just not <laughs> no treat it you know you can treat it as a rumor like it's fine to think it's a rumor but in the in the immortal words of chapter master valrak all rumors are lies all rumors are lies until they are officially announced by whoever owns that thing so like whenever chapter master valrak talks about something coming out for 40k those are rumors, and rumors are lies until Games Workshop announces it. It's the exact same thing for Creative Assembly. If you see anybody talking about, like, oh, they're going to do this for Total War Warhammer, they're going to do this, or whatever, it's it's all bullshit until CA announces it. <laughs> because it's just, it's just so inconsistent. And I only say that because I don't want I don't want people to treat that as gospel and then get 
super like down and allow that to become like a festering aspect of the community which granted people are gonna do that anyway nobody gives a fuck what i think um like no nobody cares about so soy soy master of sotek and his or Ma lore master of soy tech or whatever the fuck it is um so i i don't care but uh yeah no i'll i'll uh i um i i will believe what happens when i see it Dynaman 95 cheered. X100. On a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is the Pontus DLC for Total War? Warhammer? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Pontus is Pontus is the last true DLC. <laughs> it's, it's the last. It's the last. It's the last uh true one. Um. Yeah, because I the thing about Total War Warhammer right now that you really have to keep in mind is it is creative assembly's only money maker like literally the only form of income creative assembly has right now is total war warhammer and that's gonna be the case until they release a new game and that's if whatever new game they release does well which is a pretty big if because the last few titles that they've released that were adjacent to total war warhammer didn't do very well you know unfortunately you know, Troy did okay. Um, Pharaoh did not super great, but okay. Uh, Three Kingdoms did amazing at first, and then not good. Who is Pontus? It's a joke. Um, Pontus is a faction from a historical. I think it was Rome One. There was a there was a there was a DLC that Creative Assembly announced that was the Pontus DLC for I think like Rome One or something, and it there was like it there was a whole thing about like there was people that hated Pontus and they didn't want to play as Pontus and they were so angry that Pontus was a DLC choice. They were like it should oh it was Rome Two. They were like it should have been this other faction. How dare it be fucking how dare it be Pontus? It should have been this other thing, and so there was a meme making fun of those people that was like they they come out and they're like. I don't want to play as Pontus and someone else is like, you don't have to like, it's, it's, it's free LC. Like it's just being added to the game. You don't have to play Pontus. And they were like, fuck CA. How dare they put Pontus in the game? I don't want to play Pontus. So it, it's just making fun of the Creative Assembly fans. Because, goddamn, if, if there's anything that can be said about the Crave Assembly community, uh, it is that you could literally give them a bar of gold in their hand and they would proceed to spend however long they have left on this earth bitching about that bar of gold. <laughs> and why it should have been a bar of silver. Or diamond. Or titanium. Gold? Ah, fucking useless. How many Andes are in the Warhammer space these days, and why are they all so fun? Uh, they all seem to be pretty fun, but like what? There's Andy Leesk, Andy Chambers, Andy Hall, Andy Law. Dynamo 95 Chief. Um, X100. There's one more. To clarify, there's like five. it was the Rome 2. They were announcing the starting factions, and people were expecting the Seleucid Empire, and they announced Pontus instead. Ironically, Pontus was my first Rome 2 campaign. How would that be ironic? Wouldn't that just be, like, coincidental? But yes. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with Andes. I, 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 I'm beginning to suspect that Games Workshop had, like, a secret breeding program back in, like, the 1970s or the 1960s where they created a coalition of Andes who would go on to create much of what Warhammer Fantasy is. <laughs> yeah andrew Kroor. yeah that's another one yeah so that yeah there's five at least there may be more do i think all total war legendary lords should have unique mechanics no i think they should have fun mechanics and many of them should have unique mechanics but for some of them, it may be more appropriate for them to have mechanics that have been cannibalized from other races but you know spun in an interesting way 
I think it's completely fine for legendary lords to share mechanics so long as they are unique within their own species. So like all of the empire legendary lords should be unique compared to one another. But if like, say Carl Franz was relatively similar to like a high elf character, you know, he's still unique, but he's got like, he's stolen a couple of concepts from them. That's fine. I don't care. As long as it's fun. Like, I don't really care about uniqueness. I care about enjoyability. Hey, Loremaster. Hey, Michael. What's up, brother? When can we expect to see Thankful in Total War Warhammer 3? I'd say probably 2025 would be my guess. Do I think Creative Assembly will retcon Malekith? No, because uh, Total War Warhammer is specifically about Warhammer Fantasy 8th Edition, which is aka the era of Karl Franz. And in that entire setup, it's Malekith, not Malarian. Malarian is Age of Sigmar in the old world, not Total War Warhammer. Plus, they would have to spend a shitload of money to go in and like rewrite everything that mentions Malekith to be re rewritten to say Malarian instead. And they'd have to pay all the voice actors to come in and re-record all their lines where they say anything about Malekith to instead saying stuff about Morellian. And that is just way too much money. They're just going to say no. <laughs> No, we will not. Do I ever see an Age of Sigmar Total War? Probably. Not for like 10 years, but probably. That being said, I would say it would be very hilarious if Creative Assembly added a character into the game who's like a prophet of some kind and in their diplomacy dialogue with Malekith, they have like a cheeky thing where they call him Morellian or like make a reference to it. That would be funny. Like if we got like Nyeth the Prophetess for the Wood Elves and she's like, I know your real name. <laughs> I, would, that would, I would enjoy that. That would be cheeky. But like a good kind of cheeky. What are the awesome corn units coming with the corn update? I don't know. Oh, hi, Professor Phone. What's up? Good to see you. I haven't seen you in forever. How are you doing? Um, yeah, I have no fucking idea. That's even assuming we get a corn update. We might not. I don't know. I hope we will. But, I mean, for corn, you're going to be really scraping the bottom of some barrels. Um, like, you could do a corn demon chariot that's pulled by a juggernaut. I mean, it'd be pretty similar to what the blood throne is, but I guess it'd technically be different. So you could do like a, yeah, you could do like a juggernaut chariot. Um, you could make like a more elite version of a unit we already have. You could do some more beastmen units. You know, you, you, corn gores, you know, corn gores, obviously. Uh, they could add in more monsters, actually. Like, they could add in a lot of monsters that are not technically corn, but are, cl like, close enough. So they could do, like, the Slaughter Brute, not technically a cornate monster, but eh. Um, which, which is what they did with the Cockatrice and the Mutilith Vortex Beast. The the Cockatrice and the Mutilith Vortex Beast have nothing to do with Zinch. They're undivided. Um, but they were like, eh, we'll, we'll put them in the Zinch DLC and it'll be fine. Um, and yeah, that works. So they could do like the Slaughter Brute, the Giant Spined Chaos Beast, the, um, the Basilisk, the Chimera. Like they could just throw in random chaos monsters and that, that'd be fine. Which legendary lord could the Greenskins get in Total War? Uh, the most likely candidates for future Greenskin DLCs, uh, the, the, the one you're going to get is Gorfang Rockgut, probably. Uh, no, sorry, not Gorfang. Uh, Gorbad Ironclaw. There we go. Gorbad Ironclaw is almost guaranteed who you would get. Because there has not been an Orc DLC character. And he's the only really big Orc character left. Um, and he's he's your Orc... He's your, he's your pig. Your pig boy. Your pig rider. Your sweet pig character. Because um, he, he rides on a really, really big um, boar. Um... Spleen Ripper is its name. 
Uh, so Gorbat Iron Claw would probably be the big one. Um, that being said, they may also do if if they wanted to really surprise everyone, they could do. Fuck, what's his name? Um, God damn it, um, Tenant. They could do Tenant Four Eyes. Um, which Tenant Four Eyes? I I think that's his name. Uh, Tenant. Tenet Four Eyes is a forest goblin shaman character. Um, he's not as... Oh, wait, no. Spleen Rippa is Wurzax Pig. You're right. Gouger? I think Gorbads is Gouger, maybe? I can't remember. It's got a name. It's something like that. Where would he start? Uh, probably in the mountains of... Oh, wait. Uh, hmm. He could start anywhere. Because the whole, the whole thing about Gorbat Ironclaw is that he disappeared a couple hundred years ago. Uh, well, more than a couple. Uh, like five or six hundred years ago. Um, but like, so Gorbat Ironclaw vanished a, quite a while ago. And he's he's missing. Gorhu, thank you. Gorhu um, is the pig's name. So you could just, you could literally put him anywhere in the world. So you would put him somewhere where there are green skins that are not currently, that don't currently have a fun campaign. No, it's not Gorhoof. Hammond, you lying bitch. Uh, Grunta. Yes, Grunta. Thank you. Um, so let me tell you, if I got anything I wanted for the Greenskins, right? I would not do a Lord Pack with Greenskins. If I got anything for Greenskins, what I want is a Champions of Chaos DLC for Greenskins. Um... Now, it doesn't have to have the same amount of legendary lords, but I would want it to be a DLC that is purely focused on green skins and just fleshes them out. So, like, for legendary lords, you give me Gorbat Ironclaw as your character that starts in some faraway land. So he starts in, like, Cathay or Lustria. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he brings in lots of orc goodies. Um, then you give me... Um, Tenant Four Eyes, who is your first Goblin Shaman Legendary Lord, and is also your big Forest Goblin special character. Um, and he brings a bunch of new Forest Goblin shit, gigantic spiders and stuff. Then you give me Gorfang Rotgut, and Gorfang Rotgut is your super big tanky orc character who has really unique mechanics because he's able to make like trade agreements and he's able to like use like special extort mechanics and he starts in Black Crag. Um, Tenant Four Eyes would start up in the Black Pit in the Empire. Um, and I think those are the only four Legendary Lords we really need. Um, then for, like, Legendary Heroes, you know, give me... Um, give me Gatilla, Gatilla de Hunta for a Wolf Goblin Legendary Hero. Give me uh, Snagla Grobspit as a Spider Rider Legendary Hero. You only listed three lords. You only need three lords, though. I don't think you need four. Uh, I would do three legendary lords, but then you get a bunch of other content. Um, because like I don't, I don't think you need a fourth legendary lord. You could do a troll, I guess. I mean, they're technically. There are trolls that are of note. Would be the be best way I could put it. Um, I don't really see any of them even being legendary hero material, especially because all the really famous trolls are chaos trolls. Like, even in the Badlands and the Mountains, World's Edge Mountains, every single famous troll is a chaos troll for some stupid reason. Um, that was actually one of my big complaints. Uh, Cubicle 7 released a new book, like, literally a few weeks back, called Tribes and Tribulations. That's their green skin expansion. And it introduced uh, three new special characters that you can use in your uh, for your campaigns. And they was Skarsnik, Gorfang Rotgut, and a troll character. But the troll character is a fucking chaos troll character, which is dumb. Um, Little Gork. Honestly, Little Gork would be kind of interesting. Um, I a Little Gork as like a legendary hero would be kind of based. I'm not going to lie. Which for anyone that doesn't know, Little Gork is a giant who took a really bad hit to the head and has become convinced that he is in fact Gork. 
Um, like he is literally Gork. And I think he's even like painted green by a bunch of goblins. Um, that would actually make for a really fun legendary hero. But yeah, I think honestly, if you did like three legendary lords, three legendary heroes, and then you just added like a shitload of genetic co or generic content, it'd be great. You know, uh, like give me like the Savage Orc War Boss, the, um, the Black Orc War Boss, the, uh, the Night Goblin Shaman, the, the Night Goblin Great Shaman, and the, uh, like the Forest Goblin War Boss. Or just Goblin War Boss. And then for generic heroes, you give me the Savage Orc Big Boss, the... the regular Goblin Shaman, so the so like the Forest Goblin Shaman, not the Night Goblin Shaman, but like a, a regular Goblin Shaman. That way he could have mounts. Um, the like Night Goblin Big Boss... And the, uh, like, I guess, I don't know, regular orc big boss. I, I guess you could just do the three generic heroes. And then for the units, there's like so much shit that needs to be added. There's so much shit that has to be added. Oh my God. Like <clears throat> you need just off the top of my head, you need goblin bolt throwers, colossal squigs, Mangler Squigs, Squig Gabas, Arachnorok Spiders with Web Flingers, Gigantic Spiders, um, uh, Big, uh, uh, Big Stabas, uh, and then from there you can just do like a bunch of variants, like Black Orcs with Shields, Orcs with Spears, um, is there a lore of magic associated with the spider god? It's literally just lore of the little wa. Lore, lore of the little wa is just goblin magic, but it includes, um, it includes like all the different types of goblins. But like just adding in more variants of a lot of the units we already have would be really nice. But like, yeah, a cha yeah that's why I say a Champions of Chaos DLC for Greenskins. Like, I, I need two more Champion of Chaos DLCs. I need one for the Vampire Counts and one for the Greenskins. After that, we're good. We're fine. We don't have to do any more. We're done. Um, and then for the rest of them, I think you could cover the rest of them pretty well just using Lord Packs. Hey man, don't please don't forget the lore redeem. Hold on. Lore redeem from Hammond. Can you explain what is the watch? Oh, um, <laughs> no, actually I can't. Not off the top of my head. Uh, Hammond, I think that would be much better to send to Andy. That would be much better to send to Andy, not me. That's like super specific. No, no, Captain underscore Hammond cheered. X100. Hey, I gotta go, but please don't forget the Law Redeem. It's for a project I'm working on. The context of the Law Redeem question is in that DM I sent. I'll catch it later in the VOD. Thank you, Sir Satek. What about Norska? Uh, Norska does not need a Champions of Chaos DLC. Norska could easily get away with, like, two Lord Packs. They need two, but they could get away with two Lord Packs. Um... Uh, cause with Norska, cause the, the problem you're going to run into with Norska is units. Norska does not have enough units to fill up a Champions of Chaos DLC. Um, green skins are only really able to get away with it because of unit variants. Um, what more cool units do the Vampire Counts need? Uh, I have a playlist on my channel. That's the Vampire Counts. I think I called it the Bloodlines DLC proposal. Go watch that. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. I really dislike the idea of Black Orc variants. I would much rather give them a switch weapon button. I mean, you could do that as well, but that's still going to take development work. Yeah, Throg, the, the thing you do with Throg 
it, or uh, wrong. The thing you do with tr uh, Norska is you do a DLC around monsters and a DLC around um, like other actually you know what Norska would really struggle to get two DLCs to be frank um, they, they need more legendary lords but I could see like one DLC worth of stuff that would be really good to add but after that it starts to kind of run out really fast um, they, they could use a lot more legendary lords, absolutely. You know, I I definitely want Sile the Faithless and Muna Mim and uh, Bjorg Bearstruck. Like, at minimum, I want those three. I need those three as legendary lords. Because with Bjorg Bearstruck, you get your, like, were, your, like, your werebear slash skinwolf werekin character. With Muna Mim, you get your Famir character. And with Sile Faithless, you get your Shaman, Shaman Sorcerer Lord character. Which, like, good. I love the Allegiance system until World War 3. What are your thoughts on it? And what, if any, improvements would I like to see? I like it a lot. I think the uh, Allegiance system is kick-ass. Uh, I think the only thing I would change... The only thing I would change about the Allegiance system is they should add new skills to all of these skill trees for all the generic... Every single Lord in the game should get access to a new skill tree or a new set of skills that buff allied units in your armies. Because the changeling has it. Like, the changeling has some... Um, the changeling has some buffs that buff allied units. But he's, like, the only character in the game that does that, which is stupid. That should be a generic skill that everybody gets. Do I think the Beast of Chaos will be removed from the Age of Sigmar because Beasts are part of the old world? Uh, I've heard rumors that's going to be happening, but that's not the reason because that doesn't make any sense because the warriors of chaos are in age of Sigmar. So should they be removed from, uh, the old world? The answer would be obviously no. Um, so that, that line of logic does not hold up. Um, I have heard though, that there is a chance that the beasts of, that it's not that the beasts of chaos will be removed. It's that they would get absorbed into the slaves to darkness book. Um, which would still be weird. I'm going to be really upset if they do that because that's not a faction they should axe. Because I know it's not that, it's not like it's unpopular. Plenty of people play Beast of Chaos. Oh, Trial Kiss. That's actually a pretty cool idea. Getting some kind of buff for having maxed out your allegiance points with a faction. That's cool. Yeah, hero being able to recruit heroes, I think, would be reasonable. I, I could see that. Like, there might be some finagling that would have to be done, but if they could do it, I think that'd be fun. All right. Anyway, dudes, uh, my voice is sore because I'm not used to talking this much because I have not been streaming a lot lately. So... I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up for today. Uh, I am going to send y'all off on a raid. If you're also oh happen to be watching on Twitch, we're going to go raid a new friend I just made. Um, who are actually Warhammer fans themselves and have been getting into Warhammer. Like they've been building minis and stuff. So uh, if you're on Twitch, I'm going to send you all off to meet some new friends of mine, a new content creator that y'all may not be familiar with. And if you're on YouTube, uh, I don't know. Have a good day. Bye. Because <laughs> I, I know there's a way to do YouTube raids. I haven't figured it out yet. I need to figure it out. I will do that before my next YouTube stream. So anyway, thank you all so much for um, watching. I hope you all had a lovely day. We got another set of achievements done, which is great. And uh, yeah. Shit's good. So uh, if you were on Twitch, please make sure to be super duper nice and lovely to uh, Sigrid and Bird, who we're going to go hang out with. And if you are if you happen to be watching on YouTube and you want to join the raid because you're like, oh, I want to watch what they're going to go watch, uh, we're going to be going over to twitch.tv slash Sigurd and Bird, um, who are hilarious. Um, they're, they're, they're quite the pair. Here, I'll even post the link in YouTube chat. So if you want to go there, you can. Uh, please tell them uh, that I say hello and uh, hope you all have a great day. I'll be back soon. Quick soon. I'm going to go get some work done. Anyway, thank y'all. Bye-bye.